Yes. This is what happened. Jason Berry. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. David Witham. Robert Belmore. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. Ron LeHoulier. Here. This time I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as full voting member for the evening. First item of approval of the minutes of March 20, 2024, the workshop meeting minutes. Move for their Bear approval. Motion. Mr. Horton. Move for their adoption. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Next item approval of the minutes of March 20, 2024, regular meeting. Same by have a motion. Mr. Horton. Motion to approve. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Committee reports. You had a uh, summary of all the uh, site plan meetings and uh, land use uh, boards. Is there any comments on those? Seeing none, turn to uh, City Council report. Mr. Witham isn't here. Does Mr. Belmore have anything to uh, share at this time? Well, a couple of things are, have occurred and are occurring. Um, I can mention they passed a new zoning ordinance amendment uh, restricting uh, automobile type of related uh, businesses like that Firestone uh, tire dealership that we have and we're having trouble, code issues with, uh, site issues with the, what's the new car wash called? It was going to call Shammy or something, but what is it, Whammy or what is it? Washville. <laughs> what is it? Washville. Washville, so in all the auto car parts stores and, and tire stores and repair stores, uh, they are they are no longer allowed along uh, High Street. Is that right, Michelle? Correct. So that was passed by the council mon Monday evening, and they're in the middle of uh, reviewing the proposed budget for the next fiscal year. Um, they only got to the school portion Monday night, and uh, we're the proposed budget was right at the tax cap level we weren't under we weren't over they made an amendment to increase the school budget by five hundred thousand um, they approved that but they will be revisiting the budget this coming Monday night at a special budget committee meeting and uh, they'll make further adjustments most likely to the school and or to the city they haven't tackled the city side yet and then they'll vote on the budget hopefully Monday evening unless another meeting was required. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bumble. Thank you. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update, Mr. Richardson. Sure, the, at our last meeting, um, nothing specifically related to Summersworth, but we were, we've been talking about uh, revising some of the bylaws for the Regional Planning Commission. And we also spent a lot of time on um, looking at regional data on traffic accidents, both for uh, fatalities, uh, major injuries, and 
non-motorized injuries that may include a vehicle, but the victims are pedestrians or people on bicycles or some other non-motorized, like a scooter or something <laughs> type, type thing. And um, there, there, we voted on uh, some future recommendations to um, bring our goals down and how to achieve those goals. And you know, in, in, in recent years, the two uh, most uh, obvious points in, in our region that had fatality accidents were the toll booths on Spalding Turnpikes, and those are both gone. So that's going to reduce the amount of fatalities right there. So other things, you know, that's what we were talking about. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Next item, eyes on 30, 2030 committee. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we did not meet since our last meeting. Um, I did align with the chairman of the, of the committee. Um, we are looking to possibly have a meeting early in May. All right, so as soon as that is known, it will be posted. Uh, the second thing I want to bring forward is we are having our first uh, Don't Trash Summersworth event this Saturday. So uh, we will be uh, working the uh, commercial drive, which is adjacent to the Home Depot. So we'll be meeting in the Home Depot parking lot at 2 p.m. So uh, uh, bags, vests, gloves uh, will be provided. Uh, but do bring your own PPE. If you do uh, choose to come, it's open to the public. So um, uh, steel toes are recommended. If you want to bring your own gloves, that's also recommended. Hey, right. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Summersworth Power Coalition will be holding a community info uh, session on Tuesday, May 7th at 6 o'clock. Uh, so the community is invited to come out, uh, ask any questions they may have. And uh, at that session, we'll also be talking about uh, the timeline and what to expect next. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Housing Committee, Mr. Horton. Uh, again, uh, the Mayor's Housing Task Force attended tonight's Zoning Ordinance Audit Workshop with Stratford Regional Planning Commission and the Zoning Board. And uh, good information shared tonight by City staff and Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we continue to work through um, the information and uh, we'll make recommendations as the committee progresses. No further update. Thank you. Item three, old business. Any old business this evening? Director Mears. Mr. Chairman. Next, item four, new business, master plan housing chapter adoption, public hearing. Director Mears, do you have anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The draft housing chapter was presented to the board at the February 21st meeting. Uh, the chapter has been revised to include comments from that meeting, which include clarifying the need for sewer, and that there is a high accessibility of water, clarification that areas without access to city sewer could still be suitable for housing as private septic is an option, considering of housing needs through a regional lens, clarification that one level type of housing is desirable for aging uh, populations and those looking for smaller living spaces, updated end note to indicate that a parking study, study is currently in the works with Stratford Regional Planning Com Commission, and examples of housing types that would be suitable for those living below the median income. So those were all incorporated by Stratford Regional Planning Commission into this uh, housing chapter. Okay. So now we can uh, go ahead with the public hearing. Yes, and hopefully ad adoption. Okay. Uh, before we get into the uh, public hearings this evening, I'd like to ask everybody to turn off your phones or mute them and any other electronic devices. Uh, when you come, if you need to come up to the podium, speak into the microphone and address the board. If you need to stray from the podium, there is a portable mic you can use. I'll open the public hearing. Does anybody have any comments on the housing master plan chapter? None in the audience. Is there any correspondence concerning the matter? Director Mears. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Questions from the board? Entertain a motion. Motion to approve the revision Horton. to the uh, master plan housing chapter. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Barry. Any discussion? 
All those in favor, raise your right hand. Oh, discussion, Mr. Belmore. Um, not to be picky, but I think you said to approve the amendments. I think we're actually making a motion to adopt to adopt the chapter. I'll amend my uh, motion to um, adopt the housing master chapter. That's very good with that. Housing chapter adoption. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Berry. Any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Belmore. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Item B, Frank and Jeanette Vigorito are seeking an extension request of an approved plan for conditional use permit, voluntary merger, and site plan approval with waivers for a commercial warehouse on a property located at One Enterprise Drive in the Commercial Industrial CI District, Assessors Map 48, Lot 24D, Site Number 13-2020, and CUP Number 05-2020. Director Mayers. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you should have all received my memo. Uh, April uh, 21st, 2021, the Planning Board approved this uh, site plan with a request for conditional use permit and voluntary mer merger. Uh, in May of 2023, the Planning Board granted a one-year extension uh, to the applicant to start work to achieve the substantial development of this construction of this new building and Im infrastructure. Since then, uh, this lot has been sold to a different owner uh, that wants to come back and do the site plan. So the applicant is now seeking a second extension of the site plan approval to start construction within two years. Okay, uh, as far as this goes, no public hearing required, just a... Uh, Correct. ...from the board. Yeah. Uh, any discussion from the board? Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I'm not inclined to grant two years. Um, it's it, uh, just not clear on what he's trying to do here. He needs more time in which to prepare and explore the plans and use thereof. So he's not even sure he wants to use it. It's not just about finances, but he may change the site plan. Um, it would have been nice if the applicant was here and could uh, shed some more light on this. Maybe he could come up and I'm, I'm a little confused on what he needs and why he needs two years. I'm inclined to just give one year and put this to <clears throat> give a little bit of an extension. But this has been going on since 2021. I don't know if people realize it, but it's 2024. 20, and there could be new butters, uh, zoning changes, and, and whatnot. I even explored those, but. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Just please state your name and your. I'm, uh, I'm Frank Vigorito. Wife and I bought uh, one enterprise drive in February of this year. So we, we need some time to just do our due diligence to assess the plans that were approved and, and yet, you know, get, get some financing in place and put up a. a facility on that property that, that is our intent we just purchased it though this this year that's why we're asking for a two-year extension does that address your issue mr belmore yeah it just says what he he asked for um i don't know if it said anything else but butters change i'm always reluctant to do stack going off four or five years all of a sudden a billing shows up and they don't know anything about it because they haven't been notified so um a little antsy about doing two years but uh, I'm certainly willing to support a one-year extension. Mr. Horton. Uh, I agree with uh, City Manager Belmore. I was actually leaning towards six months, to be honest with you. There's a lot going on in this stretch of, uh, of roadway. Uh, again, this was originally approved back in 2021. Uh, there's been changes. Um, I'm more inclined to do six months. It gets us through at least up until fall. To, see where we're at at that time. Mr. Rhodes. So just a question for the applicant. Is your intent here to build what was originally approved three years ago, or are you in the process of examining plans to determine if you want to do that, or are you planning on a new construction that wasn't previously approved, or do you just not know yet? Yeah, we, we just bought the property in February of, of uh, this year, so that's why six months or even a year may not be enough time, but you know, our, our intention is to build on, on the site um, on the, you don't know what yet. A warehouse could be a warehouse. It could be a, a multifaceted building. It could be um, I'm working with a realtor that's here this evening as well. So we've got some conceptual designs in place. That's why um, we're seeking a little bit longer than six months or even a year just to get things in place. Okay. We just bought the property. 
I'd be inclined to agree with Mr. Horton. My, my hope would be that within six months you can figure out what you want to do here. And if it's the original plan that was in place, come back for either a larger extension or come back with a new plan if it's okay. a different one from existing. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, when I first looked at this, my inclination was, why are we giving any extension? Because of the reasons that Mr. Belmore said, um, to me, I'd much rather start all over. So I guess the happy medium is the six months. Um, I'm, I'd be willing to do that, but. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Horton. When does the current uh, application, uh, when does the current Extension uh, expire. Is my question. In May. In this May, so next month. I would be. I guess the most I would be willing to do at this time would be six months, or let the application expire. That's where I'm at. Any further questions from the board? Does anybody have a motion? Kind of a procedural question. Where? The extension that's on here. Oh, thank you. Um, where the ex the extension request on here is for a two year. Can we amend that down to a six month as it stands? Or okay. In that case, uh, I move that. Oh, sorry. Question by Mr. Belmore. Well, it just uh, confused me because the the motion here that's been proposed is for a two year construction extension. Are we extending the site plan approval, or is that expired, or is that still good? Dr. Mayors? The site plan will expire uh, in May of 2024. Uh, I don't know the exact date in May, uh, so they came in a month uh, ahead of time. Uh, so. And what about the con conditional use permit and voluntary merger? The voluntary merger doesn't need any extension, I would imagine, but. No. What about the uh, CUP? Does that expire? CUPs do not expire. So you need a motion to extend the site plan approval? Yes. And the construction permit? Build he hasn't pulled a building permit. No, he hasn't started construction at all. So it'd be So it's not a construction extension, it's a site plan extension? Yes. Okay. I was confused. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Um Mr. Rhodes? Uh, I move that the request of Frank and Jeanette Figueroa uh, for an extension be granted in the time length of six months uh, for the site plan approval for uh, site number 13-2020 and associated CUP number 05-2020 be approved. Motion made by Mr. Rhodes. Second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes for six months. Thank you. You're welcome. Item C on the new business. Bill Dubikia LLC is seeking site plan approval for an automobile sales and service facility on a property located at 220 and 222 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District, assesses map 61, lots 10 and 11, site number 02-2024. Director Mayors. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this has come before the Planning Board for a conceptual review. Uh, the applicant has submitted site plan. The site plan proposal is to construct an automobile sales and service facility for a new car dealership comprised of about 22,000 square foot building with associated access ways and parking. The proposal includes demolition of ex existing retail buildings, two driveways, one from Route 108 and one from Blackwater Road, and a handful of waivers. The property is located in a commercial industrial district. This has gone to uh, site review technical committee. Uh, Horsley Witten is reviewing the drainage report right now. There was uh, a lag time in uh, when we got the uh, cost estimate for Horsley Witten for um, third party review. So uh, there is some changes to the landscaping uh, plans and there's a number of waivers. So the applicant requested to be put on the planning board agenda to go over some of these waivers.
And is the plan ready for review? Or are we just reviewing waivers? I would say it's not ready for complete acceptance yet until we get the revised plan set. And I've talked to the engineer about this. Okay. Oh, when you're ready. <laughs> Did we go over the waivers at the conceptual review? I don't recall. Uh, yes, we yeah, did. We did. A number of them. That, that, that was the but whole I don't know if yeah. it was all of them. I think there was a couple missing. Yeah. Well, until we accept the plan, I'm not inclined to vote on any waivers. That's just me. Um, I just soon table this to the next meeting. There's a motion to table to the next meeting. Motion made by Mr. Belmore to table to the next meeting or to continue. So we need to ask the applicant if they're okay continuing to the next meeting, date certain? Uh, it's Why? the board's, board's pleasure. Um, we would rather present it, it, what we have. What? Mr. Bomo. Why do we have to ask the applicant? Don't we have a certain amount of time once the plans are accepted? Yeah. Yes. We haven't yeah. accepted them yet. Well, it's if we want to read notice or not. We've already noticed for a public hearing. So you dropped the motion? Uh, no. If there's no second, it's dead anyways. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Second for the purpose of discussion on this item. Um, so on a discussion for this, if we don't have a complete set of plans, um, I'd have two questions for the applicant. One would be, would a continuation to the next meeting be acceptable? And then second, if you acknowledge that the plans aren't complete, what was it that you were hoping to discuss this evening? Um, I don't know if I ever acknowledged the plans are incomplete. Well, uh, why don't we, just a parliamentary procedure, why don't we just withdraw our, our uh, tabling motion for the moment since we're, that's non-debatable, we shouldn't be discussing, we should just vote it up and down. And maybe we just, I'll re if you withdraw your second, I'll withdraw my first. Sure. And just go into a discussion on what. Motions have been withdrawn and discussion now, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, so same questions that I had previously asked. Uh, would you be, would a continuation be acceptable? And then regardless of whether you'd consider the plans incomplete at this point, what was it that you would hope to, to discuss tonight? Well, let, let me step back a second. For the record, my name is Eric Sari from All This Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, and I also have several people with me uh, as part of the design team. Uh, we did submit a, a complete set of plans and drainage analysis. Uh, waiver requests went in uh, after that. We already went through technical review, and as Michelle mentioned, the plans are out for third-party review by uh, Horsley Witten. Um, we're in a state of flux on the team right now. The landscape architect has departed the team, and we're in search of a new landscape architect. So although plans were submitted, they're going to be replaced at some point in the future. So that component of the plan, we can discuss it, but it's not going to be what you're going to see going down the road. Um, so my thought was to move through the waivers that don't talk, talk to landscaping, that, that don't speak to landscaping, um, because a lot of them are site driven and don't really rely on a number of trees and things like that. Um, and also to present the plans as designed. We only had a site plan last time, now we've got grading, drainage, utilities, the whole, the whole nine yards. Mr. Horton? I guess where my thoughts are at is if we accept the plan as complete, we listen to his presentation, and then I'm not, uh, I, again, I don't know that I'm inclined to vote on any waivers right now, missing the third party review and or hearing that there are changes or in the absence of the landscape architect. So I guess my thoughts right now are, now are we can accept the plan as complete, listen to his presentation, and then table or continue to the next. That's kind of where I'm at. Mr. Rhodes. The only concern I have with that approach is if we're accepting them as complete after just acknowledging that they're incomplete. Um, it well, puts I, us I, in a bit of a bind. The question that I ask is would it be worthwhile having effectively a second conceptual review to go through the waivers in more detail? And then once we have an actual landscape plan, 
third party review complete, we can address these plans mm. as they would be at construction. I would counter that by saying, I mean, there's a landscape plan in the package and plans change all the time through the process. It's not necessarily when you get to planning board that everything's going to be done and we're not going to make changes as we go forward. But you've already acknowledged that the landscape plan that we have is not the one that we'd be voting on. It, that, that is true. That is true. Yeah, I'm, so not, I'm not looking for approval of the entire site plan review tonight at all. That's not in the cards. I recognize that. Okay. Mr. Haberman. Hey, so, so is that any different than the as-built? So we talking about the as-built? Yeah, the as-built would be done way down the road post-construction. So the design is a little bit different than the... Well, I mean, the, the as-built would be a, a, a condition uh, of approval. It's something that we would yeah. have to submit, you know, a year or so after construction is finished. And we don't... We do not know whether or not it's a really extensive change in the... Uh, as far as the landscaping goes, I mean, yeah. it's... it's Different riders on the same horse, essentially, is the way, the way to describe it. I mean, it's essentially going to be the same approach. I don't right. know if everything's going to be exactly the same. Uh, there was some talk about swapping out some species. But as far as the general appearance goes, it should be very similar to what you see now. It was just a philosophical difference between the landscape architect we had and the applicant. Elevations and things like that. It What's that, sorry? Elevations and drainage and stuff like uh, all that. All that stuff will not change. Yeah, the, the, the mean of the plan will not change at all. All right. So a, lo a lot of it tonight is just really to get some more board input now that we have, you know, you know more complete plans of drainage and utilities and lighting and things like that. Yeah. And that, that will inform us going forward. If you have con uh, comments on landscaping, that will inform our new landscape architect as well. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Better wishes of the board. Hear the waiver presentation, uh, Mr. Horton. I was um, to again. Let's do some discussion. I'll make a motion to approve the application as complete. Motion made by Mr. Horton to approve the application as complete. Is there a second? Is there is there a middle ground somewhere? I would like to hear the presentation. I would love to hear the presentation. I would love to make notes. Clearly, the applicant is coming back. Um, I agree. This is not complete. I, I can't say it's complete. Not a good conscience. Um, even if it is just the landscape, we are looking at the entire package, right? So is there anything that we can do in the middle where we can move the needle a little bit forward? Before that, there's no second on the uh, application acceptance, so you want to withdraw? Okay. I guess you can make your presentation on waivers. Okay, well, um, I'll just go through the plan set. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I think he was asking, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, uh, just to go through the plan set, a general overview of the plan set. And then that, that, that was my intent. And, and not go over the waivers after discussion from the board. Want to get into waivers? We can, we can do that. Okay, go with. Let's, let's do what she what said. The director said. All right, you got it. Well, you guys know where we're at here. This is 220 and 222, or 222 uh, Route 108. Uh, used to be a trailer park and the Big Dipper, and there's also a little retail strip there now. Uh, existing conditions. This is the old trailer park right in here. This is where the Big Dipper was, which, which we tore down, and there's this retail strip here. This is Blackwater Road 108 right in here. Cumberland Farms is right across the street. So this is the demo plan, basically it tells you everything's coming out, as you would expect on a site like this. It's already flat as a pancake, so it's not that difficult. And this is the site plan. This is no different than what was presented to you before. It's the same size building, same number of parking spaces, the same access points. Uh, in this case, we've got the main access here and another access on Blackwater. Uh, we did have a discussion with DOT after two months of waiting for a meeting with them. Um, and Michelle was at that meeting and I was talking about the scoping. Uh, and our traffic engineer was assigned a scope. Uh, they are in the process of doing the full traffic analysis now and they'll be filing for the DOT permit in the very near future. Um, so I don't know if they really need to talk about the plan considering we talked about that part, but there we go. This is grading and drainage. As we discussed the last time, uh, every single island in the parking lot is a tree well. It's kind of a fancy rain garden and all of that will drain to the back here to another rain garden 
and which will infiltrate into the ground. As I discussed pre previously, the soils here are ex excellent. Uh, we've got one minute perk rates. I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, so we actually had to slow things down to get proper treatment. Uh, but everything will be infiltrated and properly treated before it leaves the site. Uh, overflow is over here in the corner, and that only overflows in the 100-year storm, and that's right down the side of Blackwater Road. It's quite simple. Um, erosion control, simple. NHDES standard erosion control. We've got a road control matting where we need it, rip wrap where we need it, um, uh, construction entrances where we need it. Very simple standard stuff. Nothing too fancy or out of the ordinary. And this is utilities. Everything's underground. Uh, water's coming from Blackwater here, as well as uh, communications. And then power's coming down into here to the transformer here. There's an existing pole here that we're using. Gas line is in here. Gas line is right here on the, our side of the street, which is good. And there's sewer in here. Uh, coming up, taking the, uh, the sanitary as well as floor drains in the shop into an oil water separator before discharging out in here. Uh, since this plan was done, the surveyor came back, found another manhole, which is fantastic. There's a manhole right here that we're going to tap into, so the plan's going to change slightly, so we actually don't have to cut into 108 uh, with that, which is good. Um, obviously, electrical power for the sign out in here, and there's an emergency generator in the back here uh, that is part of the plan. Lighting. Lighting is going to change a little bit. Uh, we're trying to back it down a little bit. We uh, trimmed some of the fixtures on the building. Uh, we added uh, back shields to these lights in here, and we're also looking at potentially reducing the intensity because it's pretty darn bright, uh, brighter than I think we were looking to get. Uh, so we want to cut that back a little bit. Um, everything does comply with the ordinance except for some overspill on this side, and there's a waiver request for that. This is um, a glass company. I forget, I forget the name of it. Interstate, that's right. Interstate glass is right here, so it's already commercial parking lot, so it's not really a concern there. The, the key is down here to the abutter. Where we've got zero foot candles over the property line, so we are meeting that standard. This is another way where typically lights would be shut off at night on a commercial site like this. In this case, we want to dim them. You can see everything on the perimeter is off, so all of those light poles are off. It's just the ones in the center and a few of the wall packs that will be dimmed down, and that's to provide for safety and security. Uh, you've got a site here that will have millions of dollars of, of inventory at all times, so the, the police chief was, I think, he was in favor of doing something here for some night lighting. Uh, so the idea here is just to get a little bit of light out there and not leave it on full blast all night. So I think it's about 25% of the full blast, um, of course, minus the perimeter fixtures. Truck motions, obviously, it's, you've got 108 um, coming in here, so this is the main entrance. The truck can go around the site, exits onto Blackwater, can also back up into here, which is why this island is striped. Loading will be right in here. Now, that's at grade loading. There's no loading dock or anything like that. Um, that will obviously change quite a bit when DOT comes in with their project, uh, which is a lot of the driver behind the site. As you see it now, we had to pull everything towards the back of the property, page south here. Um, we're also talking to DOT about the bus stop. Right now, they have a bus stop right here in the front door. We don't see the need for it. We're going to try to make it go away or move it to here. And then the fallback is over here, so not in the front door. Um, discussions with DOT are ongoing, and as usual, they're not going quickly. So uh, we expect that to drag on for, for quite a while. Uh, but adequate tr access for trucks uh, in the current situation, as you see it, and in the future when we have DOT's project completed. These are details, standard details, landscaping. And this is the landscaping plan done by Woodburn, and this is what we discussed previously. Um, we expect the next one to be along these lines. Uh, still don't know who the applicant or the um, landscape architect is going to be for that. Um, but the key here was just the real driver was buffering the abutter on the backside, and we expect to continue that. Landscaping details, and here's some building. I'm going to bring up Doug, who can talk about building. Yeah, good evening. Uh, for the record, uh, Doug Remore with Jewett Construction. Um, so yeah, just real briefly on the building itself, I'll touch on the elevations and then I believe there's a rendering after this uh, that we can look at too. Um, the building uh, complies with the height or ordinance and is uh, basically compliant with Kia's national branding standards. A lot of the black uh, ACM, a lot of storefront glass, and uh, there is some EFIS involved as well where we have a waiver um, request in front of you for that. Uh, this is the, uh, the money shot here. The rendering, you can see uh, the outside, you know, is very uh, modern looking square, uh, blacks and grays, whereas the interior kind of shakes things up a little bit, a lot of warmth, um, and kind of breaks up the, uh, the cooler colors of the exterior. We have a double service drive uh, to your right. 
uh, to assist with vehicles coming in for service. And then there'll be a shop in the, the back half of the building, uh, main entrance in the front, everything will be fully uh, sprinkled and compliant. And uh, yeah, I guess that's just for the, the architecturals. So that's the quick version. Uh, if you guys have any questions on any of that, welcome any questions, any comments that'll help guide our design going forward, uh, landscaping, lighting, you name it. So have at it. Any questions from the board? Mr. Horton? Uh, no questions, just comment. I, I respect, uh, you know, the aggressive timeline, um, but uh, I have no significant um, issues with what you've presented here tonight. Uh, I think kind of just once we kind of get the whole package information yep. and third party review, uh, I think this should move along pretty, um, pretty good. Appreciate that. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, just a couple of comments as well. Um, the big concern that I had when this plan was originally presented was the lighting yep. and the overflow onto the residential in the back. The fact that you've got that cut back. So even at the full brights, you're not leaking into that yep. neighborhood. Uh, really, really pleased to see that. Um, and for one members perspective i don't have concerns with a waiver for night lighting at that reduced level on here um, as you mentioned millions of dollars of inventory and darkness invites things we don't they want. don't mix <laughs> yeah so uh fully in support of that um on the landscaping I'm, I'm a little disappointed to hear you're going away from the plan that was in there unless your intents to add more on there um i think the plan that you sent in although it's below the threshold that is technically required you need a threat a waiver for given the usage of the site and what you had in place it's the kind of plan we'd want to see so um disappointed here that you're going away from that unless it's to get it closer to non-waiver territory um no concerns around uh curb cuts traffic flow anything along those lines um i suspect you'll get some pushback on that bus stop there's a lot of medical stuff in that area so they're probably going to want a stop in the area yeah. uh, but support moving in a little bit if you need to i'm also impressed with the fact that you got a response out of dot in only two months given some other applicants we've got up here so uh whatever your secret is please share um beyond that i think you've got a good plan and i look forward to getting the final complete set thank you mr richardson i'm, I'm actually disappointed that we're not going ahead for everything tonight and, and to nobody's fault but if, if we don't have a complete plan we don't have a complete plan but uh, I look forward to this, and uh, I, I agree. I, I thought you're, um, for the site itself and for, I, I, I'm always amazed when the purpose of the open space for the vehicles that are on there is so that people driving by, they see your vehicles and they can, and to put up the kind of landscaping they, that you're proposing, that's remarkable because in some ways that impedes that being able to see those vehicles there and I'm, but um i thought it was very well planned out so i hope when you come back that it you know it's equally as impressive and uh, that we can move forward the only the only comment i had and I, with the exit um on the blackwater road the only question um i'm glad that you're not putting an x there to prevent people from you know it, it's on the other side of the road but that x at the gas station there that causes so much confusion oh, yeah. when i'm there yep. you know because people think that they got room to drive and be on the other side and they don't yeah, and they, they block it up and yep. people start getting angry and you know and, and and i think that that in particular just kind of creates more confusion than it solves so i'm glad that we're not seeing one of those so right. thank you any other questions on the board do we need a motion to continue until next month? Uh, either a motion to continue to next month or uh, a motion for uh, incomplete application. I like to continue better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. March or May 17th. May 15th. Mr. Horton. Make a motion to continue uh, the application to May 15th, 2024. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes.
Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Item D under new business, Tim Wilkins is seeking a waiver from section 12.3.B of the site plan review regulations requirement for proposed utilities to be placed underground on a property located at 18 Patriot Way, formerly 187 Route 108, in the Commercial Industrial CI District, Assessors Map 44, Lot 28, Site Number 01-2021. Director Mears? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a project uh, that was approved in 20, July 2021. The planning board approved the request for a site plan and condo subdivision to cr construct a 40,000 square foot contractor storage and office building with a associated infrastructure. Uh, applicant began construction in the project for June 2022. The applicant is seeking a waiver from the requ requirements to install underground electric. The original site plan showed underground electric along the north side of the property to come behind the existing structures on the property. Applicant is proposing to have electric service come underground along Patriot Way, which is a private driveway, until the property area, which at that point is being underground, to the new Transformers buildings. So this would need a waiver to allow for those uh, poles. Uh, this was brought to our attention at the last planning board meeting, so that's why the applicant is before us. Thank you. Is the application ready for acceptance? Yes. Entertain a motion. Motion made by Mr. Horton to accept the application. Seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, my name is Dan Oot. I'm the project manager for Patriot Holdings. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Tim Wilkins today to talk through the, the situation here. Um, <clears throat> one disclosure is um, I recently came onto this project about five weeks ago. The previous project manager is no longer working at Patriot Holdings. So over the last five weeks, I've essentially interviewed all the subcontractors, met with all the utility companies on site. I've met with Jeff, the building inspector, and actually Dana as well. Um, and ironically or not, Jeff is actually the one that called me to, to inform me of the situation we had with these uh, overhead poles. Uh, so that's when I met with Jeff and Dana on site. And since then, I've spoke with Eversource, our electrical subcontractor, and um, our site contractor as well to get into understanding of, of what happened here. So the approved plans showed underground electrical running along the uh, north northern property line of our um, of our property behind the existing buildings to remain, which is um, Stewart's Ambulance and Granite State um, Games, it's two businesses still on the property. Um, when Eversource came out last year to kind of inspect the site for constructability, make sure there weren't any issues, um, there were two primary issues that came up from that visit. The first is that that pathway led to Route 108, pole number 701-18, which already had the maximum number of power drops, meaning it had the maximum number of connections made to uh, businesses in the surrounding area, so we could not tap off of that pole um, and then in addition to that in further investigation deeper into the site that northern property line behind the existing buildings uh, specifically the the granite uh, state games building there's only about there's less than six feet of space between the the existing building facade and our neighboring uh, business the tri-city dealership their foundation their um, where they parked the vehicles and everything. And so Eversource's point there uh, was that there was not enough space to safely excavate, trench box, uh, run the electrical, and then in the future, if there was ever a need to service the lines, there was not enough room behind the existing buildings to, to run this. So between the, the pole issue and kind of safety concerns about the constructability behind the uh, buildings, the site walk shifted to the south 
side of the property. And so the south side of the property is uh, there's an existing driveway entrance to the existing properties and then we've extend, ex extended that into the property to the three new buildings. So that's Patriot Way. Uh, and that lines up with pole 701-19, which we, we are able to tap off of. But <laughs> um, essentially, that's where all of the existing underground utilities are currently. So there's multiple underground gas lines, water lines, sewer lines feeding our property as well as adjacent properties. And so the discussion that Eversource and the site team had, actually, there's one other piece. Um, the site contractor was there that day, and there's a... <coughs> In, in the packet, there's a photo of a, a set of plans that has numbers written on it. These numbers, this entire site is ledge. Uh, and so these numbers are drill points to assess how deep that ledge goes. So we had anywhere from one and a half feet to over nine feet thick of ledge that had to be removed from the, from the entire site. So between all of those existing utilities already kind of running through that, that zone um, underground and all of the ledge uh, that had been, you know, dug up. Uh, the discussion on site with Eversource was that the first couple hundred feet would be on overhead poles, and then it would transition to underground, kind of in our property where we're already digging out for other utilities, and it would go underground to three transformers and underground to the buildings from there. Um, the the last kind of two comments I'll make is um, <laughs> when I first met Eversource on site. This, this project's had some challenges from, from really day one. Um, it's the schedule's pushed a number of times, uh, the budget's blown to, to say the least, um, but <laughs> Eversource actually mentioned to us that more than once his supervisor had asked to shift our transformers to other projects because of these schedule pushes, so uh, we're, we're really hoping to <laughs> kind of realign ourselves with the, with the town and everyone and get Eversource back out and kind of finish the project because at this point, electrical is critical path. And thus, I am here. And I, I believe I've covered my parts. Does anybody in the audience care, care to comment on this application? Is there any correspondence concerning this? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Take questions from the board. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, I've, I've been wondering what was going on over there uh, as, as an unfinished project. But I think you made, th this is an excellent presentation. I mean, it, you ran into a buzzsaw. And, and uh, I, I, I think by, you know, to nobody's fault, it just happened to be that way. And I think your, your preparation here for showing us exactly what the problems is kind of gives me my answer right off the bat to say, sure, you know, let's, yeah. let's have a couple of polls and, <laughs> and then let you get back to work. But that's my opinion, so thank you. Mr. Rhodes. Um, agreement with Mr. Richardson here. I think you're making the best of a very difficult situation. Just wanted to mention here that as somebody who's professionally a project manager just in the software world, um, I kind of know what you're going through. <laughs> yeah. on, uh, it's a very tough position. So I think you've come up with as, as good of a workaround for this as you possibly could. Um, and good luck. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Barry. I completely echo the <laughs> both guys before me. It's uh, you don't know what you don't know. Right? It's really that simple. It's you're, you got unlucky. The fact is we didn't know that the transfer would be tapped out. So it's okay. We understand. Um, solution is good. Um, it's too bad it can't be underground all the way, but we understand. So no, no problems from me. Mr. Horton. My feelings are actually quite opposite. Um, I understand. I understand what you're going through here. But uh, you you also proven that there are already existing utilities in the ground in that location or near that location. So it is doable. Um, I think this is kind of just an after-the-fact type of situation. Um, I'm trying to remember what the spec on electrical is, but it's like 30 inches, right? Uh, as, far as, as far as depth? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head. The, the only other thing to keep in mind is the clearances required from other you know, underground utilities, gas, water, 
et cetera, and just in that first run from the property, it is quite congested. Understood. Um, I'm not. I'm not in favor of uh, approving the uh, the waiver. That's just one board member's position. Um, that's all I got. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, then entertain a motion. Mr. Richardson. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll read it again. Uh, <laughs> I, I move that the request of Tim Wilkins of Patriot Holdings uh, for a waiver of Section 12.3B uh, of the Site Plan Review Regulations to allow utilities to be above ground where regulations require them to be underground be approved. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion? Mr. Belmore. Is this a total waiver so we could put poles on, on his property? This is all private way, right? But he's going underground after a couple of poles. He is going underground at the uh, property line uh, where the new construction is it, in the back of the lot. Yeah, that, that, that is correct. So it's, it's not a complete waiver. Correct. It's a it's couple poles and then it goes underground for the rest of the transformers. So. I don't want it on the record that it's a complete wave. He's still going to go underground. So I don't know if you have to modify the motion or just uh, in regards to as, as presented a waiver in a, a waiver of the uh, underground utility waiver as presented. I don't know if you need that qualification. I'm just asking. If everybody's comfortable just granting the waiver, that's fine. But I, uh, the record will probably speak for itself. So maybe I'm just getting into the weeds too much. I'm, I'm willing to make that that adjustment to the motion, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I had assumed that it was the, the new plan as presented. Yeah. But as presented then, yep. The motion should reflect that, so, yep. Motion by Mr. Rudson, second by Mr. Rhodes. Yes. With the amendments. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Wave it passes. Thank you very much. Item E on new business. Adam Johnson is seeking a site plan amendment to add two residential units to an existing 12-unit residential building on a property located at 10 Green Street in the business BH district with historic overlay. Assessors map 10, lot 172, site number 03-2024. Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has come before you for conceptual review. Uh, the applicant has submitted a site plan amendment, is seeking to add two one-bedroom residential units within an existing 12-unit multifamily building. The total number of units for the property would be 14 uh, residential units. Applicant is seeking a waiver from the on-site or parking requirements where 10 spaces are required and 22 spaces are provided. The property is located in the business and historic form base code area 4 residential so uh, district. Uh, and residential multifamily is permitted on all levels. There are a number of waivers uh, with this request, so, and uh, this is considered a complete application. Application is complete. Correct me is application is complete. Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay, entertain a motion. Mr. Horton, move we accept the application as complete. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. 
Opposed? Motion passes. This time I'd like to invite Adam Johnson, representative, to make their presentation. Okay, good evening and thank you for your time. Uh, as noted, I spoke before you a little while back about a conceptual review of this project. Uh, we've revised our plans to accommodate and incorporate uh, commentary and discussion around some of the, the considerations, concerns, uh, feedback, and other, other notes um, to revise accordingly and have some other uh, notations that we'd like to review this evening. So again, to summarize the basic tenets of this project, our objective is to repurpose underutilized existing space within the existing envelope of the property, uh, which requires no structural modifications of the, the building itself. Uh, the objective is to create two new one-bedroom residential units in addition to the existing units in the property. What you see here is an overview of the location of the proposed lo um, units within the existing property envelope. So to zoom in a little more uh, closely upon the, the site of the proposed units, this is within the existing basement. So there's a section that's framed in uh, with utility service and some improvements already in place. The objective is to divide out two units in the existing space and uh, complete further improvements to accommodate this residential space. Again, an overview of the property site plan as well as um, the, the layout in conjunction with the, the abutting properties. Really what we're looking at here is expanding existing parking on the upper level, expanding existing parking on the lower level to accommodate the increase. Um, this stairway, which was encroaching on the property by way of a right of way, which traverses through the parking lot and a um, a consideration for access to the prior hotel. While the right of way remains and the easement remains accordingly, um, this space will be used for both egress and ingress of cars and snow removal space, which was part of the concern from prior. And additionally, um, addition of new parking spaces here, which I'll explain shortly. So the parking paradigm remains the same with addition of new spots in underutilized space currently, sorry used to a different mouse um, and again as Michelle noted we are seeking a waiver for the parking requirement um, we are hoping to increase the parking capacity from 14 existing spaces to 22 um, obviously it's not meeting the, the requirement of two spaces per unit but it is a net increase of parking uh, for each unit as opposed to the existing ratio that exists today These are the waivers requested. Um, the applications were submitted in full, but ultimately it outlines um, a boundary plan set by a licensed land surveyor. The plan you have uh, is relatively comprehensive. It was adapted from an, a, a plan that was uh, generated quite recently and modified to reflect the site. Um, the plot lines were not updated to reflect the, the um, setback on the street, but otherwise it reflects accurately based on that existing completed work very recently. Additionally, the parking spaces I addressed already, um, in addition to landscaping design standards, the landscaping design uh, is intended to remain nearly as is. We had one, uh, one shrub out front damaged in a recent storm, which we anticipate replacing in kind in the existing location, but otherwise the landscaping dynamic is intended to remain uh, largely the same. And then park and recreation area, we are anticipating giving up some of the available green space on the property in uh, an effort to comply to the extent possible with the parking requirement. So as such, there's minimal green, uh, green space remaining, so we'd like to request a waiver on that basis. 
So what you see here on the left side of the screen is the existing unfinished space in the basement, which is pretty voluminous. Um, it was, I mean, by looking at early site plans and the work that's been done, um, it almost appears that further improvements to the property were planned and met with substantial challenges with regard to ledge and um, structural issues. So uh, it stopped, it was framed in, and uh, provided with water and sewer. It is an improved uh, sewer system, thankfully. And we have existing um, natural gas, water, and sewer, which all meet the capacity for uh, well in excess, frankly, of the, the intended scope of work, the proposed scope of, scope of work, excuse me. The exterior of the property, as you see here, is the, the former site of the Summersworth Hotel, uh, which was recently demolished to create an auxiliary parking, um, at least as my understanding, understanding to be the purpose for a new development. Um, on the Tangreen Street side, this expansion, although it does still benefit a right-of-way and an easement for the abutting property, um, it facilitates more opportunity for snow removal, as I said, additional uh, egress and ingress of vehicles for, for the expanded parking. And on the right side, um, unfortunately, what you see is a, a roofer completing an emergency uh, patch during a recent storm. But the idea here is to capitalize on underutilized space here to expand that parking area. So before I get to that, are there any questions about the scope of the project or any of the considerations that I discussed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Open a public hearing. Anybody have any comments on this application? Is there any correspondence concerning this application? Director Mears? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close <laughs> public hearing. Mr. Rhodes? Um, so, a couple of questions here. When you pulled up the floor plan for the, the two new units to be put in, mm -hmm. um, I didn't see on there how folks actually get into these units. Is there a staircase down from the first floor and they go through the laundry section? There is a existing uh, rear entrance to the building okay. entrance or, and or egress. Um, it passes through what's currently the laundry room, but there's a dividing wall planned to simply separate that space. Okay, sounds good. And um, just as a, a quick summary of this, this matches what you had brought before us conceptually from last month, correct? No substantial changes? Correct. So we've got a situation where the, the building, the, the, the dwelling is more out of compliance now than it will be when you're done with this work if it's approved. Correct. That okay. is the objective. Sounds good. And I uh, just have to say, I thought my basement was strange. Uh, that's really impressive. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Horton. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just kind of had a question about uh, with the hotel being removed now, uh, does that affect your site where there's a steep uh, drop off, we'll call it? And, and is there anything you, you need to do to protect that? Um, hazard, I guess. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, we were, it was recommended we add a guardrail to the site plan, which we have uh, to protect, obviously, the, the traffic coming in or leaving the parking lot as they make that swing. Um, that said, um, the owners are willing to consider additional, given the height. I don't think anyone anticipated the height differential to be quite what it is. Yeah, right. So a small fence would obviously be well within their, their willingness to add to that plan if that was uh, consideration as well. If it's not too late to do so, I suppose. Saban. Just a uh, site observation this afternoon. I did a drive by. I didn't see any erosion control on the site at all. I'm sure, if it was supposed to be here. For the, the um, demolition of the. Yeah. Of the old building, yeah. I don't think he's disturbing anything. Uh, the, the loose soils and everything, the, the runoff, the, no? Just concern of the board. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's actually a different site. Well, that's it, a different site? Yes, yes, oh. sorry. I apologize no, if I... We've reached didn't. out to the developer about that issue. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Let's say a motion for uh, regional impact. Mr. Richardson. I'll move that there is no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Uh, 
Mr. Board, want a further review of the waiver request? Are you ready to vote on the motions? Sure. Could you do that, sir? Any particular order or? Okay. So again, the vehicular circulation parking, uh, we are not able to meet the two spaces per unit. We are requesting a waiver. Um, we are in excess of 1.4 spaces per unit. And again, it's an, a net increase in spaces um, from what we have today. Additionally, as I, I kind of alluded to in, there in the conceptual review, but the rental model, given their one bedroom units, the location, uh, in addition to the, the proximity to the bus stop as well, uh, we also have planned bicycle storage and other, other improvements accordingly to promote um, eco-conscious commuting and things of that nature. But the idea being the rental model has really never been shown to have a, a negative impact on the parking capacity. Um, and where we show a net, a net increase in uh, ratio, we don't expect there, that, that to continue. So we've we requested a waiver on that basis. Uh, landscaping design, uh, as I mentioned, the, we don't plan any major landscaping renovations. Uh, we are replacing one shrub in kind with what was damaged recently. Um, and there is a small section of, of essentially moss that's going to be uh, repaved. That being said, the, the hotel demolition modified the existing tree line. Um, that will be used for snow removal and um, a section essentially to allow the new parking spaces to, to make the swing to park. And finally, to install the guardrail um, and a small fence for just for safety precautions. But the idea behind the, the landscaping design is remains much much the same. Um, the park and recreation area again, we're we're relinquishing what little green space is there to a, attempt to match the parking standard. Um, so we're requesting a waiver for that on that basis. And is that four? Sorry, I have one more. Yes, the site plan. I apologize. Um, the site plan that was I shut the screen, but the site plan that was provided uh, is is a draft in the absence of um, the setback review from the street, uh, but it was adapted from a recently stamped document that was prepared for for a, a budding property. Um, it matches the rear lot lines accurately, and um, given the the envelope of the building nor the structural work, um, nor any, any site boundaries, or none of them are expected to change. We're requesting a waiver on that basis as well. Entertain a uh, motion for the first waiver, specifications for plans and documents to be submitted, a boundary plan stamp by a licensed land surveyor. Mr. Horton. Move that the site plan application for Adam Johnson's for 10 Green Street uh, uh, for the waiver from Section 101D D of site plan regulation for requirement to provide a boundary plan stamp by a licensed land surveyor be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waive is granted. Move the request of Adam Johnson's for a waiver from the site plan regulations requirement regarding on site parking spaces be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore for waiver number two, seconded by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number three. I move that. design standards. I move that the request of Adam Johnson for the determination that existing vegetation. Suitable lo uh, suitably located as per section 126B7 of the site plan regulations be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. We request Adam Johnson for a waiver and site plan regula regulations requirements to provide open space for park and recreation on the site be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Oh, you put your mic on. Too late now. I already said it. Second <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> by Mr. Belmore. Second by Mr. Horton. First discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Wave is granted. 
believe that's it. Director Mears. Yeah. You kindly review the conditions of approval. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first condition is a plan revision. Please identify the handicapped parking spaces on the site plan prepared by RP Pro Paint and a contracting LLC. Please note that new curbing proposed to be installed shall be granted as per section 12.4.B.5. Uh, please note that the internal bike storage area, please note the closest bus stop to the site, show uh, the location of the dumpster on the site, and it also needs to be screened. Uh, conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The final plan shall, bear, uh, shall be submitted three-folded 22 by 34 copies of the full plan set to the Office of Development Services. Federal and state permits are required. Uh, conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Construction cost estimate for this project shall be submitted to the Department of Development Services. A pre-construction meeting is re required prior to the start of site work. A performance surety in the amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but no less than 25% of the cost of site construction determined by the engineer's estimate for construction value will be established for on-site erosion control and site restoration prior to any site work or off-site improvements. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. Uh, the applicant will be required to pay standard water and sewer connection fees on new properties connecting to the water and sewer system. Water fees will be based on the size of water meter needed and the sewer connection fees will be based on the ed estimate water used in equivalent number of bedrooms. Erosion controls shall be installed prior to any construction. Erosion controls shall be properly maintained throughout construction. Any breaks or breaches shall be repaired within 48 hours of a storm event. The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works. This shall include, but not limited to, driveway permit, utility, pole license, and trench permits. Conditions applicable during and after construction. Applicant shall receive a certificate of appropriateness from the historic district for any alterations to the building per Chapter 19, Section 14, Historic District Zoning Ordinance. Per Section 19.2.E9, the building shall display the designated address numbers in such a manner to be visible from the street which abuts the main entrance to the property. Such numbers shall be a minimum of 3.5 inches in height and may be reflective. Building plans shall bear the stamp of a certified protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire. A copy of completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of Development Services annually on or before July 1st. All landscaping shown on the plan shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded so no direct light is visible from adjacent properties or roadways. Snow storage shall be located uh, on the property are hauled off site as per chapter 12 streets and sidewalks. Snow shall not be deposited upon any street or sidewalk. All parking lots, driveways, and aisles shall be paved. Uh, per Chapter 11A, dumpsters on site need to be suitable and permeable or placed on paved area, screened from view from the public way, and as-built plans will be required. Thank you, Director Mears. And say a motion for a site plan. Mr. Berry. All right, Mr. Chair, I move that the request of Adam Johnson for a site plan amendment to add two residential units to an existing 12-unit residential building for a total of 14 units at 10 Green Street be approved with conditions defined by the director. Motion by Mr. Berry, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Any discussion? Mr. Horton. Just one quick question uh, in back in Section 3. Item D is on the... Uh, Applicant to apply for a water and sewer connection permit. Is that still required on this? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank so thank there's you. new additional units. Understood. Thank you. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Site plan is approved. Thank you all for your consideration. Thank you. Item F, under new business, Sierra Realties, Kenneth Scarpetti, are seeking conceptual review for multifamily development located at 15 Blackwater Road in the Recreational REC District. Assessor's map, 22, lot 10, site number 12, 2024. 
Uh, Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is proposing to redevelop the property located at 15 Blackwater Road, formerly used as the National Guard Readiness Center. The proposal includes demolition of two existing structures, keeping the garage structure, and includes 30 condo units and subdividing the Little League field from this parcel. The current proposal will have two access points from Blackwater Road and Parkview Terrace. The applicant is looking to discuss any on-site design concerns with the project. The property will be will require rezoning. The property is currently zoned recreational with residential duplex abutting area. The applicant is looking for feedback on the layout and orientation of the project. This has uh, the applicant has provided a preliminary uh, conceptual design of the project. Thank you, Director Mears. At this time, I'd like to invite Sarah Realty's Kenneth Scarpetti to make their presentation. Hi, um, nice to see you guys. Um, Doug Anderson and I are partners on it, and we are, um, um, you can, I think you have two handouts, the elevation and the site plan. So we, what we try to do with this is um, basically minimize the um, uh, asphalt coverage and kind of maximize green space. So kind of follow the contour of the back of the field and then, um, you know, plan using uh, Pleasant View Terrace, you know, for stacking, and it also the intersections line up across from each other, so it kind of it makes sense that that might be an easy access, and then so there would only be one other access on Blackwater. Um, obviously, they're all residential units, uh, and the the uh, we're still working on uh, the. You know, we have the elevation is pretty much where we want to be. It's changed a little bit from our very first concept, but uh, we wanted to kind of see what your thoughts were as far as the look uh, before we uh, we've engaged with TF Moran. They will they'll be representing us. They're ready to start a survey actually next week. They've they've done a lot of the research already, but we just want to see if we're going down the right road as far as uh, with what your thoughts are and 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 that we're open to your ideas thank you mr barry yeah i'll light this firecracker why not um i like it to be perfectly frank i love the idea that you're taking a otherwise um i mean it's a national guard site i mean it's really it's brick you know it's in, it's it don't look good but you're you're turning it into a neighborhood um you know, it would have been really nice playing Little League as a kid to look over the field and I, I see homes. I feel, I feel like I'm in a, in a neighborhood, which is what you're creating. Um, you know, when I, heard, when I heard the concept of people developing this lot, I was thinking big four-story, um, you know, big four-story buildings, you know, very, very dense, very tight. I like that you're going with more of a condominium, townhouse-style um, concept here, which... Um, I think we'll play really nice. I love your idea of, of bringing out the green space. Um, we could use more green space in that area. Yeah, it's and and that was the thing when we first presented, when you know the with kind of competing against the other projects that were looking to do something there. You just look around the neighborhood; everything's single family and or residential. So that's why we really we we felt we we didn't want to go higher than two stories and and really. The armory was more of the white elephant, really, over time. It's, and, and this would kind of bring it back to a neighborhood, and that, that was kind of our goal. So we could have, you know, you could actually put a, more, a lot more units on the site, but we felt that this is a good balance, so you still maintain a lot of green space, and, and that, that's kind of how we went at it. And I like that approach. Um, you know, that... Mi Maple Street and Blackwater, there, there can be a lot of traffic in there. So, I mean, if we go too dense, we don't want to make the intersection worse up the street there. A um, couple of other questions. So what is your, your intention with the building that you're not going to destroy? Um, well, actually, it's really going to be for Doug and my personal use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like put our boats in it right now. Down the road, we would like to just... Our thought is that, you know, talking to Michelle and Bob and everybody, we're kind of thinking that we just, we zone the whole thing. I guess it's been thrown out to zone at R3. And 
and then so just follow that, that zoning and obviously we're not going to live forever but when if something ever if somebody does come or wanted to do something different down there then it would require a special exception or a variance or something so you guys would you know it would be seen again in the town but for right now it's just basically that's that's what we're just storage to. block okay that that's fine that's perfectly okay um i guess the only other thing i'm curious about is the parkview terrace is, is it your intention to pave that it is paved right now yeah but it's in really bad shape last i last i checked right it's a uh, kind it's of really spider web it's like if it needs to be we would w the surveys i guess it's a little up there we that may actually be on this property so the survey is going to determine once we have the survey done we'll find out who who actually owns that i think that's was michelle probably could speak to that yes so staff did a little bit of research on this and when the solar came in and that was a survey project uh that road was shown on the national guard uh, some of the older surveys show it on uh, the other site so I think we need an updated survey but so far as we can tell staff can tell it's located on the National Guard site okay and obviously if it it's we would um, you know this is a new project so if we're overlaying if we're doing the road we're gonna and, and that needs to be overlaid we're gonna overlay it thank so you it, so it looks decent we did speak to the council about you know there is park there's People tend to park down, um, you know, if you continue on Parkview, there's, there's kind of like a gravel area and people park for the games and everything. So we would provide like a permanent easement so that the, that people would still be able to pass. Instead of having to create a, another access from Maple, um, we, we felt that it would be better just to, w w and also water, you know, I think there's a, a 10 inch water main or something on Parkview. So obviously we would provide access for, for that as well. So it's just, you know, we just want to work with you guys, but that's, that's kind of, that's, but we thought that that might be the best way to use that. Personally, I would love to see resurfacing on that. If you're going to be in there and it, and it is yours, if it's, if it's proved through survey that it belongs to you, one, one board members, um, preference would be to see it be resurfaced, um, to, and, and, what? Uh, to resurface. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. You know, top, top coat. Right. Um, and, and it would also work. It's it's paying it forward to the Little League field because that's the primary entrance to the ball field, too. So it's a it's a nice gesture to the city as well. And the folks that are going to be using the field. So um, beyond that, I love the idea. Uh, best of luck in your design. Thank you. Is that one other question? Like uh, when we're doing the layout, we, we talked about, you know, two, three bedroom design. Is there any do you, we're not really sure of the mix yet. So it's uh, we haven't established that yet. Do I subdividing the baseball field from the Yeah, that, that's going to go back to the town. City. <laughs> yeah, I've been curious to see what Mr. Witham's comments were on this. <laughs> Mr. Horton? Uh, yeah, my comments echo a lot of Mr. Barry's. I, I think you've done a well, uh, a well thought out plan here, given the unique shape of the site. Um, I like that you didn't uh, go overboard with trying to put too much housing into uh, the uh, plot. I like the uh, the green space you're proposing. Um, it reminds me of a, uh, a recent development that was done on Stillwater Circle. It has the same sort of feel, I, in my opinion, and it was well done there as well. So, you know, it was probably like blocks of three or four townhouses kind of scattered with additional green space. So I, I, I get a lot of that feeling here, too, and uh, I think it was a project that was well done here in the city as well. Um, I understand your, your reasoning for keeping the additional structure. I just feel like it might look out of place afterwards, I guess. That's, that's, that's my only thought there, being it's um, big overhead doors, brick style building. Um, but I, I understand there too, though. But Well, our thought is to look at it and if we can add some you know, sort of maybe some features screening. to try to, you know, obviously we, we want to make sure that everything, it's going to be kind of part of a whole campus, you know. So we, that would get subdivided off the, that building because we, we, it wouldn't, obviously it's going to be an, an HOA, so you don't really want that. That could kind of get 
uh, mm, yeah, sure. a little complicated. So that would be a separate, uh, a separate building, a separate lot. But again, you know, our our goal is to make it nice, and we really won't build anything that we don't live will live in. So we're gonna we, we're gonna we, we're gonna explore that to see what we can do to the existing building to kind of bring it kind of into a residential look with, you know, without going crazy, but, but you know, there's a lot of things you can do that t kind of tie it into the other buildings, and so it, it doesn't stand out like a, a sore thumb. I appreciate Mr. that. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just the thought that I had, and first of all, uh, before I get to what I was going to say, Thanks for allowing access to the ball field and the parking and that kind of thing because I'd hate to see that parking go out into the street because that would just add a lot of congestion on either Blackwater or uh, Maple Street. So that's important and I appreciate that. When I looked at this, one of the things that I, that I wondered, and I'm glad we're not talking about parking and the number of parking spaces because that's all taken care of. But have you thought about the street of being one, like a one-way circuit at all or um, I'm, I'm, I'm we haven't people, really explored you know? that yet um, because it does have good, you know, everybody's going to have two car garages, yes. so it's, um, it, it's, it's, I don't know if it's enough units to, to warrant, you know, having the one-way traffic. We could look at that um, and, and see which way, but then it might get confusing on Parkview mm. where, because that'll be two-way traffic. And then all of a sudden it would change to one-way traffic. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just something sure, that I, when that I looked at it, I thought about it because, um, you know, the, sometimes that intersection with Maple and Blackwater, um, that can get a little get, bit congested and with the light just down the road and that kind of thing. And it was just something that, I, that came to my mind to ask. and. In all honesty, I'm, I'm not in favor of it one way or the other. It's yeah. just something I thought. That's all. I think in all honesty, yeah. I think the natural thing for people to do on this is going to enter and exit from Pleasant View because it's, um, it's going to be easier probably, and that probably will end up just like almost like a, almost a, um, in a way an emergency mm -hmm. way in and out. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, so first off, echoing comments about the, the look and feel of this, my initial thought looking at this when it came in the packet was it's too bad it's not higher density, and then I realized we've got 45 elm, we've got the bleachery project going in, and all likelihood in areas that are more conducive to super dense development. This is more of a neighborhood, so this actually does fit better with the character of the area. Um, so wanted to uh, give you a thumbs up from that view. Um, good call having the uh, houses on the Blackwater side of the street. All you need are a couple of good bats and you've got a lot of replacement windows there. So good call setting them up that way. Um, I definitely appreciate the continued access to the ball fields and that coming back to the town. Um, echoing Mr. Barry's comments around paving park view. Uh, if you're putting in new pavement for the street here and that's out of sequence with it, you're going to have uneven replacement cycles for those and doing it all at once would keep that more in sync um it, it's also encouraging to see a plan come through a building come through that is new england architecture um so that was a nice thing to to see um in terms of feedback on two or three bedroom units um i'm not sure that as a member of the planning board i'd have a preference to push you one way or the other um i think the market would probably dictate that and it seems like the majority of multifamily developments we've had in lately have pushed down on the bedroom unit size. I don't know if that means you should do the same or if you've got a, a niche to fill with larger ones. Um, but from my view, let the market dictate what you build, um, what you can maximize the use of the site. I don't think I have a preference. But glad to see this plan. I think it's a great, great use of the, of the site and glad to see the ball field it's still there. It seems to be a good happy medium from what the uh, comments were from neighbors on the previous proposal. Oh, yeah. Uh, we met with everybody. We walked around and met each neighbor and showed them kind of what direction we wanted to go. And, of course, you know, they were apprehensive at first because I think they've seen some crazy, some ideas that scared them. And um, so when we showed them that we're kind of just want to pull it back into their scale of their houses, it was very well received. and. And 
So we, and as we go along, we'll stay in touch with them as well. Just, you know, so that it, it eases their minds. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, just <coughs> one final thing. Just to, 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 my opinion on your two or three bedroom is, I've been talking a lot about family housing and I you know, if you, if you throw some three bedroom in, in there, you're gonna get families, you know, you're gonna have kids and I think it's good to have kids and, and, uh, and I, I would just shoot for a balance, uh, you know, two, three bedroom. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we, we totally appreciate you. Oh. Mr. Haberman? Yeah, I just want to agree with the board and everything that's going on. Ditto every, everything that's uh, being said. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the board? Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. We'll see you guys soon. Welcome. Item G on the new business. New, Eng New England Sports Hub and Event Center LLC is seeking a site plan amendment to amend condition 4A for offsite exaction requirements on a property located at 165 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District. Assesses map 63, lot 10, site number 04, 2021. Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting to amend a condition uh, of the condition of approval in the notice of decision, removing uh, the language uh, which is in my memo highlighted in red. Uh, the applicant shall construct the improvements as required from the New Hampshire DOT uh, driveway permit, concept one, included but not limited to the intersection improvements of Willen Drive and Route 108 prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy and to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works and Utilities and any further improvements as required by New Hampshire DOT per the driveway permit shall be paid by the applicant. That would be uh, struck out. That's what they're asking. And then uh, this would remain an offsite exaction in the amount of $20,774 for improvements to Willen Drive shall be completed prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. Uh, just a little bit of project history. The the request for a two lot subdivision conditional use permit and site plan for an athletic facility was approved with the conditions by the planning board on June 1st, 2021. The planning board approved four extension requests as part of this project. Um, as part of this project, a New Hampshire DOT permit was submitted and is under review uh, of New Hampshire DOT and the city is listed as the applicant of this permit. The current permit submission includes intersection improvements to Willen Drive and Route 108 as part of uh, consideration. Uh, staff recommends that the board accept this uh, request as complete and begin the review process. Untamed motion to accept as complete. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I'm just a little confused. Um, they haven't submitted a revised site plan. So we have, we're being asked to remove a condition of approval but we still have a site plan that shows the turning lane. So um, I would think they would go hand in glove with this request. So I'm confused on if it's uh, on the uh, request being bifurcated like that. So, so uh, there is a concept, it's concept one, I think it was included in your packet that from what I understand, I reached out to the applicant about this, and they are still requesting to uh, include those dry, uh, Willand intersection improvements as part of this request. It wasn't dropped off the site plan amendment, as far as I understand. Any further discussion? Well, then we st there's still an application to DOT for a driveway permit. I reached out to the New Hampshire DOT and uh, the driveway permit has not been withdrawn at this point. 
So I would think we should notify DOT that that they want to withdraw the the city's city had a sign too as part of this project withdraw the driveway permit and we're going to change the site plan to have no turning lane that's my confusion so what i guess i would be entertained in uh hearing what the applicant has to say and and yeah. perhaps they could answer some of these questions so you're withdrawing your you withdrawing your uh, motion? No, my motion still stands to accept the application as complete. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that again. All those in favor of the application that is complete, raise your right hand. Opposed? Okay, motion fails as far as the application being complete. At this point, what we do, Mr. Uh, Director Mayors? So this was uh, noticed because there's a change to the new, uh, notice of decision, so uh, the board could listen to what the applicant has to say or... Uh, what was that, I didn't catch that last part. Or uh, vote that it's incomplete. <laughs> hmm? Or, or continue the application to date certain, I guess, sorry. Well, wishes the board. Mr. Chair, uh, question on approach here. Without <coughs> accepting the application as complete, can we hear the applicant and walk through some of their plans or, or questions and then make a determination on the plan? In other words, can we, can we hear the applicant without accepting or rejecting the plan? Yeah, you could hear, as long as the applicant's okay with that. Yeah, I, I think it will become clear in our presentation exactly what we're asking for, and then you could revisit uh, whether the application is complete after there's a little more ex explanation. Okay, at this time I'll... Uh, I'll let you start your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're a little confused, <laughs> too, whether you're not expecting the dialogue. Um, James Ball, uh, representing Sports Hub, along with Craig Riato, its principal, and Phil Hastings, who's I've worked with on all the big boxes in town over 20 years, is our real estate attorney helping to guide us. We are looking for an amendment to 4A, as the city planner introduced not changing the exaction fee. Um, I'm only a little confused because the DOT has been a long-standing issue the last three years. I'm going to be happy to talk about specifics as we go along. I'm going to start out with generalities because we had a meeting with staff six weeks or so ago about these issues. Essentially, we all recognize that you know we're tethered to the DOT's time frame and the difficulties uh, of that. And in learning that, not only have they not taken any action along 108 or final designs, but they're also millions of dollars behind in their budget. So when it comes time uh, for a permit for occupancy in late August and September, don't want any contention, obviously, between us, or functionality. And I thank you for the last planning board meeting uh, wasn't here but listened online and knowing what uh, Mr. Belmore said and Mr. Rhodes about the other difficulties and the difficulty downtown with DOT and I know everyone understands that that process or a majority does. So when we filed it was just to change that wording so we wouldn't be tethered to the, the DOT. Now originally at the planning board uh, three years ago this June, the site plan was approved, and the only engineering with that is an SK-1, which I can put up for reference, which is an as-is plan, as it sits right now. And that just shows radius that bigger vehicles, fire trucks, as they have in the past, can go up Willand Drive. 
during that meeting, we discussed what the city would like to see besides the exaction fee for additional pavement. And that was widening the road approximately 10 feet coming from the driveway of uh, the fund center out to 108. And there would be an apron that would go into what's called a, a slip lane. Well, that little addition of the radius just fell into the highway easement. And because of that, the highway right of way, that triggers a, a DOT review. And that was really the only reason we were there. Now, unfortunately, if it wasn't for that, then between the city and the applicant, that widening of the road and the, the radius would, would take place. Well, during this long process, the whole um, intent with DOT and that discussion at the time with the planning board was if we widen it to have the two, the two official lanes, then maybe there would be a bypass lane across the road temporarily. But that, so SK2 was added to the site plan, and all that showed was the, the two lanes and the radius going out. Now we've been dealing with, with, with DOT on different asks, and they've overstretched themselves because it isn't about a little bypass lane on 108. They're looking for 20 feet, which is would be 10 feet of pavement and another 10 feet of um, setback room. Well, we don't have the power, as the state does, in eminent domain. And I don't want to get into other people's business. I've done this for 36 years, and I've been in these negotiations. But when they deal with the people across the street, anybody reasonably representing them that's going to be a huge taking and an expensive taking, and it can go in many different ways and last a couple of years. That's out of the scope of what we're originally doing. So with regards to procedure, SK2, uh, which is just the concept one plan, which I can put up on an easel, uh, just showing what that would look like if those improvements were made on Willand Drive. So, you know, we're... They can't hold us hostage, and that's what's happening. I personally, being here my whole life and on the planning board and city council and all the educations I've received and all the developments over these 30 years in dealing with DOT directly, sometimes myself, you know, early on, I see this to the nth degree. That original widening of Willand Drive, I was a catalyst for that back in my late 20s and the reason for that Bob Stackpole who owned where Target is and Home Depot they were doing an industrial park so as I was maturing with my business and I had the education of being on the boards I said hold the phone we're doing a whole master plan we need more jobs more taxation let's save and conserve Willand Pond and get some big boxes in there and get a through road for infrastructure improvements for the other roads the, init the initial concept with that was extending Willand Drive to a cul-de-sac and doing it on, on the other side. And Mr. Belmore and other staff at the time when the big boxes happened, the city council finished, you know, putting those roads together. That little difficult widening took a year and a half to two years just on, on, on the entrance. So we're in that position. I'm only saying that because 20 years ago, that intersection was a fail. And uh, it will always read that way unless a light goes there. In other intersections, like Blackwater Road, they're suspecting because of you only can do so much infrastructure. And like Massachusetts towns over the last 20 years, it's just more and more population, more and more traffic. So even the Blackwater Road light starts to become dysfunctional. They're projecting in 2032. So our interest, my personal interest in working with this project and Craig Riato growing up here, and we're all aware of that, all of us, that intersection. And for our part, even though up on Willand Drive and from the city's part, you know, we'd love to see a light there. I've been as involved as I could be. We had a large Zoom meeting 
uh, two and a half years ago, and staff was involved, Bob Belmore, Michelle, uh, Mike Babinski, Craig, myself, uh, Phil, our engineers. It was during COVID, so there's 20 people on the, on this, on the screen. And Mr. Belmore spoke thoroughly uh, because of his position in history here, and, and I spoke as much of an advocate as I could, you know, could for the city. So our intent at the planning board meeting three years ago in presenting along with the site plan was showing an as is. And then a concept was presented and then just to show what it would, would look like. So all that engineering is done. Um, and then the amendment, which is 4A, because we didn't know what other improvements the DOT was looking for. So as I mentioned, I don't, I can get more specific, but you know, it's legally, the DOT can't force somebody up a side road to go across the street, even with those improvements and do their bidding and negotiate an easement that is impossible to negotiate because those people will either get what they want or push back because Brenda Avenue is across the street from Welland Drive and if the D when the DOT gets there, they're going to straighten out Brenda Avenue to line up with Will End Drive. But that cuts a lot of valuable property off. Uh, so, you know, it, we're going to sit here being idle or take another position come September. Uh, but with regards to tonight's questions, uh, SK2, there's only two plans that went with uh, the original approval. And one as is, as is, and the other one's a concept. Um, and so by removing 4A, uh, we're not tethered to them. We keep the exaction fee, and the state's going to come through and make those improvements. So it, and as Mr. Rhodes, I believe, said uh, at the last meeting, or Mr. Witham, you know, it's, it was important three years ago. <laughs> But now three years have passed. They're closer to doing it, though there's a lot of things not in place. So it's going to probably be a year, year and a half, two years down the road. So I'm a, I'm a little confused, and if Mr. Hastings has something different to say. We don't have an approved plan for making the improvements on Will and Drive. SK2 is a concept plan, and if if there's any difference of opinion with that I, I don't understand the function because what we're here to do tonight from our past meetings with everyone is simply uh, to remove us from the DOT so that we're we're not s sitting here or at council come September we have we want that light everybody wants the light uh, this intersection had issues before we came in we've already done all all the engineering uh, and it's it even with the addition of the right hand speaking turn, to the mic please just want to add that even with the addition of the right hand turn lane the intersection continues to function as an F from a traffic analysis standpoint uh, you know colloquially speak colloquially can't get that word out colloquially speaking our traffic engineer calls that plan the waste of money plan, seeing as the DOT is theoretically going to come through here and do a more permanent improvement that gives us the result that I think we're all looking for, which is a functioning intersection. I think the consensus that we gathered from observing what the planning board had to say last month was that's much closer than it was two, three years ago. and. Uh, this, if it weren't for this right-hand turn lane, we wouldn't be interacting with the DOT in any fashion because we're in the right of way. This has dragged out far too long, and this is this is why we're here. Uh, in addition to the rich context that James laid out. But I think what you're still looking. What I'm still confused and want to, to, to straighten out is I don't know what improvements on a plan besides the concept to show 
that were all in line when we were dealing with the DOT. Now, if the DOT went away and that little radius, you know, here's the crazy thing about any improvement is they may tear it all up. And as Steve Pernaw was saying, there's no final designs. So uh, we can talk about dealing with the city directly. I mean, I don't see the DOT going away unless somebody has more inside information than we do and not seeing their improvements. If that happened, uh, from a function standpoint, you know, very happy to make the Will End Drive improvements for that widening of the road in the right-hand turn lane. We've just been handcuffed because of the 108's plans and their, their timetable. Please. Go. Um, thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Philip Hastings. I'm an attorney with Cleveland Waters and Bass. I just want to add to, to Mr. Belmore's point uh, to hopefully um, – uh, provide some clarity here on what we're seeking and why we're seeking this. We're really not proposing to make any changes from what was approved originally, but as James indicated, what was approved originally uh, assumed that the DOT uh, process would unfold in a timely manner and it would be somewhat limited. So what's shown on concept one uh, what this board approved would have all been in sync. What we've discovered since that time is really a timing problem. It, we're not coming before you asking to make any changes to the approved plan. Mr. Riotto isn't coming to you asking to not do something that he's obligated to do. Uh, what we're asking this board is to, to work with us to figure out a way to allow uh, uh, Mr. Riotto's project to move forward as it has been and not be um, uh, held back by what's going on with the DOT and the entire Route 108. So what we propose is not a change to the plans. What we propose is a change to the condition in the plan. But if there's some other way that this board feels it would be more appropriate to get to the same same point, we're certainly willing to listen. I think we're I think we're all on the same page here of trying to get this project approved and up and running as soon as possible, trying to make sure that the intersection improvements at Will and Drive are adequately in place, uh, but we're, we're on two different tracks with DOT in this project. So again, we're just trying to work to get to a point that we are all comfortable with, if that makes sense. Thank you. Mr. Belmore? Yeah, as one board member, I was uh, willing to seriously consider and probably vote for removing that concept. But from my position, from my perspective, the process was a little bit out of kilter because I really would have liked to have seen some communication to DOT that we're withdrawing this concept, withdrawing our application, and we're going in front of the planning board uh, to remove this condition of approval. So I don't think that, regardless of how bad they've been to deal with, and I'm dealing with them on other issues too that are extremely difficult, I think the process could have been done better and I'm uncomfortable where the city applied for an application and the applicant didn't work with staff to communicate with DOT to withdraw the concept and to withdraw the application and we're going to be uh, they have no knowledge of this um, so I certainly was in favor of it for lack of some better word I was advocating for it in the last meeting but I don't think the process was run correctly uh, from my perspective in regards to communicating with DOT pulling back the concept pulling back our application before coming to the board um, so that, that, that's why. <laughs> Mr. Perry? Okay. Tough spot, guys. Um, this is one of those situations that's purely administrative. If, if I can interrupt for, are, are you done with your presentation? Can I respond to Ms. No, are you done with your presentation for right now? Or, uh, well, part of the presentation, which I, is confusing me, I just want to be able to explain because I think it's important to the city manager for a moment in response, okay. if I may. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, 
apologize, Mr. Belmore. You know, that was totally my call from, from past experiences. And my advice is we're only dealing, you know, DOT hasn't changed a lot of their application process, if you look online, since 1999. So when they're, they use driveway permit to a, as the vehicle to observe things, well, because the city road hits 108, then they use that as a driveway permit if there's any improvements like that little turning lane. And we wouldn't be dealing with DOT unless a conceptual improvement from Willand Drive, uh, which needed their approval just because of that one little section, uh, wasn't part of the, the concept and what the city was looking for for offsite improvements on Willand Drive. So from my past experience over the last 30 years in dealing with intersections in this community and state and a couple other states, I said we're never, we're not approaching the DOT. Our business is with the city of Summersworth. And to be on the same page, which I was, I was thinking we were, and that they were going to come through and make those improvements anyway. I mean, the last call that Jeff Oliva from Civil Consultants, our engineer, received three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, was that um, even that little portion that has to go to the fish and game as part of DOT uh, for that right-hand <laughs> turning radius, they're not, they haven't been getting to it for months. And all it needs is to check a box that there's no turtles or wetland vegetation there. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And they're not even going to start to review that little process before they send it on to the state uh, three months from now. And the reason is they don't have the employees. So I can list 15 things. We are not legally tied to it. We're not liable. It's dysfunctional. We've had these conversations. I would never pull that permit yeah. because we're working with the city. And then we come to this agreement. Then we call the state because we're not doing that. They are not running this show. We're only there be because of that ridiculous little easement, and it's, it's, it's causing much expense, much headaches, and I'm, I'm just confused by this evening. Follow-up? Mr. Valmo? Yeah. Um, what I might suggest, although I'm disappointed in the process and lack of notification uh, to DOT, I'm going to removing the application prior to coming before the planning board, uh, with the applicant, um, I'd offer this as a, a possible uh, condition of this approval, is that they uh, immediately notify DOT regarding the removal of the concept and the, the withdrawal of the application for a driveway permit onto 108. At, I was expecting to hear that from the city. And, uh, you know, I, I consider this, for all, for all the times I've, I've been in projects and all the communications we had, to be, you know, a good solid effort. And I'm not saying it's us against DOT, but you know, now they they're on to their second um, consultants. So you have District Six, Concord, with all their engineers in the process. They had consultants to begin with. They hired some new consultants. The process is still way out. It's just not part of our 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 scope. Would have loved to put a little cross strip allowing us to do the improvement on Willand Drive, which they'll end up doing anyway. And certainly, you know, I had no idea that this would be a concern because I, you know, wanted to come to a, a conclusion and, and be on the same side of it with the city. This is a, and we just had Andy Ballard up for the day. He owns 10 facilities like this. He's been one of Craig's mentors and guides. He's checking out the construction site. You know, functionally, administratively, the hiring, the feedback, you know, from a 30, 35 mile radius, it's, it's all fantastic. So all we're down to is when is that will and drive improvement to make it as best as possible, you know, when can it happen? Either the state's <coughs> going to come through and do it in their time frame or something would change and, and, you know, we could step in with the city to do it. One thing that I, I just want to say out loud from a planning standpoint and discussed it 
with Craig and, and, and Phil. And again, you know, apologize. It was just a matter of function of telling the DOT, no, we're, we're holding back for now. We can't do that without, I, I figured that, one, I wouldn't do it functionally for any client. I never had because of moving forward. But I, I felt if, if I called the DOT and said we're pulling back before I went to the planning board, that was my view in my head, I thought that would be disrespectful. So the major points in my mind is, you know, SK-1 was an as-is, and SK-2 was just a conceptual, so we all knew what we were looking for and why we're going to, uh, to DOT. That's an impossibility. Um, sorry about this administrative you know, confusion, but in our minds it was, it was pretty straightforward, especially with the past feedback. And the only other thing I mentioned to staff in a meeting, from a planning standpoint for integrity, we have a $20,774 $20, exaction fee for helping for repavement that Mike Babinski was head up on, saying, hey, just, you know, give us the money and we'll do it after all the construction so the road has less abuse. You know, it's about $25,000 um, to, to just do that work on the side. A lot of times projects will put that in escrow, so if it, if it isn't used, it comes back in five years legally. Mr. Riato's position was add what that cost was gonna be in widening that and add it to the exaction fee you know, no escrow, just so that there's monies there. So if something funky happens with the DOT, you know, the city doesn't feel like it's left making that improvement if the DOT doesn't do it. So anyway, that was the whole mind frame of, of working on this together. And, you know, we sit here asking for just changing the 4A. Uh, again, happy for the exaction fee, because I think it, it's, its integrity to increase that $25,000 from 20,774 and work with the city and the staff to communicate appropriately because I would want to have conversations with the city planner and uh, Mike Babinski because even though we try to work together there's two operating things there's a private development trying to do this and there's the city monitoring the improvements out there so we just want to be communicative after uh, this process and speak with the state together. Okay. Okay. This time I'll ask: Is there anybody in the audience care to comment on this application? Open the public hearing. Any correspondence, Director Mears? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. And Mr. Berry was in the middle of a question. Right. Yes. Statements. Lots of statements. No questions for the applicant. Um, I mean, it's a tough spot, guys. It is. You know, it's. You guys weren't planning on DOT. We get that. You know, it, um, you know, no, nobody wants the success of your project more than us, right? Um, I don't think anybody here is opposed to what you're asking. I, for one, I say strike it. Great. But the problem that we have here is administrative. The only reason I threw my hand up is because we work on site plans, right? We have drawings. There's a requirement. We get it. You guys have concept number one. That's fine. We don't have a problem with that. What we need to do together is find a solution that's acceptable to the city. And I understand where, where um, Mr. Belmore comes from, right? Um, I'm willing to work with you. Personally, um, one, I completely support. Um, the declaration has to be in writing. That has to be there as evidence, right? Number two, um, I would like to see the drawings updated. I know you say you can't do it, but... Um, you say there's an as is. We, we want to see gray lines made black. That, that's how we work here, right? Show, show us what you guys are looking to do. Um, and if, if you're referring to 4B, if that's a note on the plans, strike it. We want to see evidence of that. And that needs to be submitted to the city, to, to planning. Ideally, we, I think in lieu of making you guys come back, and I'll, I'll put a proposal out there. I'll let you guys decide if it's worth, uh, if it can hold any water. Is I would like to see that drawing set modified, as you've described, to the city engineer and reviewed, right? As long as it's to his satisfaction, I would be willing to put a motion out there as a condition of approval, okay? And I would be willing to accept your 4A right now. 
So I'm open to discussion on that one. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, so a couple of statements and a couple of questions. Um, I'm, I'm knocking a lot of dust off memory here because we're going back almost three years from the original discussion here. And I vaguely recalled running an Excel spreadsheet on my home computer next to the discussion window we had up for this to figure out exaction amounts. Um, before I get into that part, I wanted to ask a couple questions about the, the DOT process and what you went through with them because you made reference to a couple of times to a light going in here and an easement across the road. So has the DOT asked you to do things on this property that you are not capable of doing? And can you give me a very quick list of what those are, if there are any? Yes. It, originally, <coughs> we just provided a concept plan mm -hmm. so that we could all agree on it, which was widening Will End Drive, and it turned out to the right, a little radius improvement. And we were going to take that concept plan to the state because that's what we wanted as a community, city, and for, for improvements for Willand Drive. So what's happening is that Steve Perna, our traffic consultant, and the reason we came up with the concept plan was to see ahead because the state may have wanted, because people drive a little on the gravel when they're bypassing, so another additional four or five feet. They're looking for 10 feet originally. That 10 feet goes right up to the, to the property line. Okay. By regulation, they can't. They need to have a 10 foot buffer. That's 20 feet. That gets deep into those people's property, starts the eminent domain proceedings. That's a huge appraisal process. There can be kickback, legal battles, what have you. We don't have the power of eminent domain. That's the, the state's project. It's out, outside our scope. Besides that being an impossibility, they're, they're looking at us to do their, their job, which will not happen functionally or what have you. We, we would have loved to help with a little slip lane temporarily. And then during those processes, and with you know, Steve Pernaw, who's you know, I, I think the best traffic engineer in the state, and, been at it for 40 years. Um, he's recognizing, as he's speaking with different gentlemen, they may not even do the want the improvements on top of that. Or when they're done their final design, you know, what we've done may be, be ripped out. So there's all these dysfunctional steps and where they're not at. And of course, they're in, intelligent in the sense that if they can get a private citizen to go do their work, but it's just legally an impossibility we don't have those powers so you say they're asking you to do their job for them correct they asking you to put in a light no okay they're asking you to put in a wider turning lane than you can do with the property you have access to they're asking at approval three years ago all the city and planning department and what we worked with with engineering was to do some offsite improvements on Willand Drive. And if that little turning radius didn't go into a small section of the right of way, if that was widened coming out of Willand Drive going towards Rochester, we wouldn't be dealing with DOT. Unfortunately, they're not set up to deal with things minor or major. So we get thrown in to the negotiations back then, which we were hoping, city was hoping, and still hoping they'd put in a light. Mm -hmm. But their original design of widening the road and having a bypass lane and all of those items are still unsettled. The design's unsettled, the funding's unsettled. Sure. And we've been riding that, we're connected to it. So I'm, I'm going back three years here and trying to remember what the concerns were. And as I recall them, the, the major concern that we had as, as board members was that as much as we love the design and really love the idea of getting a facility like this in the city, it's going to create a situation where it'll have large pulses of traffic when games end going out to 108 and trying to turn. And we had suggested the conceptual plan of the turn lane in there to increase the capacity of that Willand 108 
intersection to as much of a degree as could reasonably done be done in the absence of DOT fixing what I think we can all agree is a broken intersection. Um, if the DOT is asking you to encroach on neighbor's property by a 10 foot span and they're holding up your interconnection with 108 as a result of that, that seems unreasonable. It would be even more unreasonable if they were asking you to put in a light. If what they're telling you you need to do is work with us to allow you to put roadway right up to the edge of that property and do something to keep people from cutting out of a neighbor's property, like a guardrail, that doesn't strike me as completely unreasonable, but it's a big ask. What I'm not clear on here is exactly what they're asking you to do and what that means you have Can to I ask for some neighbors. clarification, Mr. Chairman? To help with this, perhaps, my understanding was, and then I'll turn it over, if it's appropriate, turn it over to them. My understanding was, it's not the turning rain to, to Rochester that became the issue. The, the applicant was proposing 10, 10 feet on the shoulder of 108, so that when people going southbound wouldn't, wouldn't be going off the road, there'd be a little bit of pavement there for a smooth transition around cars that were trying to turn left into Willand Drive. But what the DOT wanted was another 10 feet, which would then bring it onto other people's property. So it's the that's, that's what held it up because they could have done 10 feet, but DOT said, no, we need 20. We want you to do 20. And that became the, the taking issue and the property taking issue and uh, stalling this project so this as is well a, as fish and games. Some so this is a, a cut creek. on <clears throat> southbound. Is that about accurate? Yes, they were proposing a bypass lane on the southbound side of Route 108. And it kept getting larger and longer and creeping into. So um, is it within our power to, uh, as a, a planning board for the city of Summersworth, is it within our power to put that turning lane onto 108 without that cut around on southbound 108 that the DOT is asking for? My big concern here is that we're going to create a stack up on Willen Drive and get somebody T-boned when they're trying to turn onto 108 because of traffic backups. And if the DOT is asking you to do something unreasonable, particularly where they're going to come through and exercise eminent domain in all likelihood to widen 108 in a few years anyway, that does strike me as unreasonable ask on their part when we could solve the problem that we have as a city by just widening Willand. Mr. Cherry. Um, so had we known what we know now uh, at the time of approval, I think what Mr. Rhodes said is entirely accurate. Had we known now, uh, uh, then what we know now, we would not have uh, structured or been in agreement with the condition as, as it's worded because it was tied to a DOT approval of something along the lines of this concept plan. We would have said to you at that time, um, as, as James said before, we'll put some money in to cover our share of what this would cost to solve the problem that Mr. Rhodes just described, the, the turning lane issue, and have uh, been decoupled from the DOT process altogether. Then the city could have gone and dealt with 108 in a holistic way. Um, but we didn't know that then. Uh, we do know it now, so we're really trying to get us back to that point, um, if, that's, if that's helpful. Ms. Horton? Did you have a question? Or no? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess I'm a little bit confused. I'm not really confused, but I, I think there's just a lot of questions out there. I guess where I kind of I'm leaning right now is maybe you know maybe the best thing is to table the next not table but continue to the next meeting. Maybe the applicant can have further discussions with the city on withdrawing the application, and uh, together come up with the appropriate plan to present back to the planning board, where the city is happy, the applicant's happy, because like it's all been said, I think we're all on the same page with. You know, supporting you guys and moving the project forward. It's just 
We want to make sure that the city is protected appropriately. We're not having huge uh, traffic issues and that, you know, the plan is moving forward accordingly. So uh, I, I guess that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, certainly further, I'm open to further discussion as well. Mr. Rhodes. So I guess where I'm kind of coming back to on this is our original concern three years ago was creating a traffic problem and a traffic, a further traffic hazard on 108 as a result of primarily traffic coming in and out of, of your facility hitting that road. Um, sounds like the DOT is asking you to do something unreasonable. I guess where I kind of land on this is, and I hate to ask you to go back to the drawing board three years later, but work with the city, try to be creative as you possibly can to come up with a way to address that increased safety hazard without involving the DOT um, or to the most limited extent possible so you can get them to cooperate I, as much as possible I don't think that's I don't think that's possible because it's the turn part of the turning lane is in the DOT right away so I, I understand what you're su suggesting but I don't think that solves the the problem what does solve the problem <laughs> at least for us is we're committed to doing these improvements. It's just a question of when. Um, and the easiest uh, approach to solve that timing problem is to, again, decouple us from the DOT process by substituting cash. Uh, and then when the DOT is ready to move forward with this, um, the city is protected because it has that cash uh, to to pay for that or whatever substitute DOT has for that. Okay. And, I, and I like the suggestion, I think it was Mr. Barry who suggested having uh, an engineering review. Um, and, and I think Mr. Belmore had a suggestion on a condition as well. That yeah, makes sense I, to me. I, I hate to use the term turn because that's the heart of these problems here, but where I would turn to here is that approach look at this from an engineering perspective what can you do what will it take to get into the state that we all want it to be in down the road um when this comes back and i would encourage you with a continuation to do that work and come back to us with a full plan the other piece that i would note here is going back to that excel spreadsheet that i knocked together three years ago the 20,774 i don't think was the number we came up with that day so I just want to take a look at the paperwork there and make sure that you had the right exact number. Mr. Richardson and Mr. Belmore. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think back to when the DOT had their concept all lined up out here for what um, Route 108 was going to look like. And, and, and frankly, I remember talking about the intersection, but I can't remember what their charts, what, the, what their met, what their presentation looked like can we get a copy of that and and see what their conceptual plan was because that's what they were here for they were here to show us what their ideas were what we're thoughts on them were and I know you know I remember we talked about lights at different different places and crosswalks at different places and that kind of thing but it would really help me to see what they had on their piece of paper as to what they thought that intersection should look like. And, and I would love us to do everything we possibly can to move this project forward, to heck with DOT if that's what it takes. Um, I, this is just, people want this. We all understand that. We all know this. We all want this. And it just seems to me that DOT is the stumbling block. They're asking for the impossible and infringement on somebody else's property. And who's going to do all of that? We're going to be stuck here. We have to make a decision. And um, I just, for me, it would really help me just to have a look at their conceptual drawing again. Mr. Belmore.
trying to garner some consensus here, so bear with me. I, I, I hear a couple of count, uh, board members concerned about eliminating that turning lane altogether. Is there any appetite to go back to DOT with a revised application, eliminating that 10 feet on the other side and informing them that the next meeting um, You'll be asking the planning board, and they gave some con some consensus that they'd be willing to withd withdraw, remove this from the application altogether. I see that as one possible option without hearing back from the applicant. The other one was m my uh, suggestion that we eliminate DOT altogether and just approve this as requested. Um, with the condition that the applicant immediately notify DOT that you were drawing the concept and withdrawing the, the application uh, in conjunction with the city withdrawing it. Um, I don't understand the need to, for an engineer to review the, the plan. I'm not sure why that should be required. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to accomplish by that. Uh, I agree with Mr. Belmore's uh, second proposition about uh, moving this forward tonight with the conditions he has stated. Uh, this has been in red tape long enough. It's time to go. Um, so, Barry? yeah, and I guess the only reason I say is for the record, right? Because that's going to be what's going to be put into the registry of deeds, right? Is all that stuff, the site plan, all that stuff is going to be um, put into our records, right? So, um, I don't know if, if just the statement of withdrawal is enough to accept it um, with, with, with notes. I, I don't know, Mr. Belmore, if you have some, some input there. Well, they would withdraw the concept from the approved plans. Okay. And it would also end up getting as bills um, that wouldn't include that. I guess. I don't know. You can help me out, Michelle, or the app. Withdraw SK. I forget the plan. Number, sorry. SK2. SK2. Which is up on the DOT SK2. Concept one was what was submitted. I don't have that printed out for everybody. I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see. It's what's referenced in the condition which they're asking to be removed. Um, okay, can I see a copy of that, please? Concept one? Uh, yes, concept one, please. That, that's what you're proposing to go back to, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so, you're proposing to go back to concept one? So that was, that was going to be my question. Sorry. That was going to be my question. Yeah, because that, that's what you're trying to get away from. This, that's right. Right, because that's your turn lane. So, okay. So let, let me ask the question then. So are, are you putting any paint down or you're just keep, you're basically going to leave it as it is? Yeah. So... There's no, I would, to respect Mr. Rhodes' comments, that concept plan would have been, would be completed now if we weren't tethered to the DOT. So the only issue is that little radius. That These aren't massive improvements, they're good improvements, and we want to see them too. It's a great location driveway coming out to Willan, every site of some sizable notice, like a big box, should have a light. You know, we're great, we're lucky to be able to go to the left and hit several lights and certainly want to make those improvements. There's absolutely no arguments. The engineering is already done to formulate that concept plan. So again, I, for integrity reasons and my experiences, tend to think planning first and that's why I had mentioned we have all the engineering it's been paid for the state comes in makes those improvements on their timetable a year and a half two years down the road great completely agree uh, with Mr. Belmore that we strike 4A then collectively we'll move forward but with staff's approval that before we try to remove the which the the permit we all put in i mean the city has to be the applicant but we were the catalyst behind it to do the engineering and potential improvements so we'd approach dot appropriately i think after uh 
we're in a position of strength and have this removed at, you know, hopefully at your will. And then go back and see, you know, if they would remove that. But here's the problem. We fall, it, it's a wonderful concept, and I've been there many times, but even that one little question is going to fall back into the regime we're in, and they can't make a single decision. If they could, great. If not, we withdraw it, you know, as, as the city's applicant and us the catalyst behind it, and let them come in, as Steve Pernaw said, or I've witnessed on many, and they'd make the improvements. But integrity from a planning standpoint, I think if we take the 20,000 and, and, and make sure it's uh, confirmed, if anyone has a, a question, we don't at this point, and you know, we add an additional $25,000 to that, so it's just in the city's account, the engineering's all done, and no matter how it proceeds, there's monies there, and that, that's the strongest gesture you know, we, we can make and agree with every contingency that came out. You know, let's work together and see if we can do something different with the DOT. I have a lot of experience with it. I know some people here do too. And we wouldn't be here, have no problem making any improvements. It's, we can't even begin, like, to discuss it. It's going to blow way past uh, not only the last three years, but come September and the occupancy permit. So, Mr. Uh, Larry? So we don't have a problem with any of that. That's that we're not talking about any of that stuff. This is this is strictly administrative. That that's what we're trying to sort out here, right? So, I guess I'm I'm 100% on board with with what um, Mr. Belmore has stated. You have to withdraw. We need that in writing. That's step one. I guess step number two, and I guess the one thing that I guess I just need people to just look at me and give me a good nod, you know, to the dumb guy in the room. So the plan is to withdraw SK2. Is, is that the plan? And you want to keep the site plan as it's been approved as is. From my understanding of what the applicant is saying is that, yes, they would withdraw that plan, but they would put up a bond for the amount of the improvements for that. That's fine. And that, that's great. I, I'm not really, I don't really care about that. It's more just the administrative of what, what will the planning board accept as far as the drawing set, because that's what we're approving is the site plan, right? So I'm okay with that. Uh, the withdrawal, the bond, great. Um, if everyone else is on board, I'll go for it. Thank you. Any further questions? Mr. Horton. I guess just one last comment for me for clarification. What I, the way I'm looking at it is with approval of their uh, amendment, the current conditions state as is, and they're looking to add an additional $25,000 towards the existing exaction, if I understand that correctly. That's what we're looking at. So. With the approval of this waiver, no intersection improvements are made on their behalf, and the offsite exactions they originally approved increased 25,000. The original offsite exactions that came up as the estimate from the engineer were the, in the amount of $47,500 for improvements that the applicant was supposed to do off Willen Drive. And so that's what the original memo said just for clarification this is a site plan amendment not a waiver correct site plan amendment right. um, and, oh. sorry mr. chairman the other thing is uh, there is requirements from state RSA's and regarding the amount of time that this that that money can be spent so that's something that the board should take into consideration uh, it's it's six years Any other questions from the board? You have a motion. I guess I'll try to start us out. Um, I move that the application of New England Sports Hub and Event Center LLC. No, that's not the right it's motion. On that page. Is that the right motion? It's on the back of the page. This. Ah, uh, sorry about that. I remove the request of the Sports Hub and Event Center LLC for site plan. Amendment. 
I moved the request of uh, New England Sports Hub and Event LLC application to amend the condition of approval by removing the language in 4A as presented by the director, leaving the only language in 4A is an off-site is that exaction in the amount of 20774 improvements to Willow Drive shall be collected prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. And furthermore, that the applicant immediately notify DOT with withdrawing their the, the city's application for driveway I don't like that language. It doesn't make sense to me. You have to go open, but you have to jump from finish it. Yeah, man. Uh, immediately notify New Hampshire DOT uh, in conjunction with the city that they're uh, that they're withdrawing their driveway application uh, onto 108 and withdrawing concept one SK two concept one. SK2. SK2 regarding the, the turning lane onto Route 108, 108 headed northbound. Did I get everything? I got a little stumble there. I apologize. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second by Mr. Haveman. Discussion. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, just one amendment to that. The uh, amount of 2774, um, the original engineering estimate was 47.5 for that, and the applicant signaled their willingness to increase that amount. Uh, were there any concerns from the applicant or from the motion or second to bring that up to that 47.5 number? Yeah. Are we talking about Can I speak? Slight clarification from the. Uh yeah. Applicant. Uh, well, before that, um, Director Mears, can you clarify that amount number, please? So maybe off there. So the twenty thousand seven hundred and seventy-four dollars was actually for road resurfacing cost off Willen Drive. The offsite improvement cost for the intersection was in the amount of forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So it would be. Sorry. Uh, 68, 224 or yes. 274. So is the 47.5 on a separate line item in the original approval that we had? And would that stand and then this would just cover the resurfacing? Originally, the applicant was going to actually pave the intersection. That was what was uh, approved at the planning board. Uh, uh, they were going to come in and do the work. With so we didn't have we didn't have a figure on the turning lane. The, the figure for the turning lane uh, from the memo that Amber came up with was uh, forty-seven thousand uh, five hundred dollars for improvements. Oh, I apologize. I Sorry. thought that was for the Willing Drive improvements, but the twenty thousand is for the Willing Drive improvements. Yes. So. May I speak to that for a moment? So if you withdraw your, your your second, I can withdraw my first and get some clarity on that last point. Draw my first. We'll get back okay. to it after we get yeah. clarification. So the, the final amount that would be on the hook here for the intersection improvements that the city would be on would need to make and that you're referring to with this engineering. And for the will and drive repayment, the total amount there would be 68 to 274, if my math's right. And does the applicant have any objection to the exaction being in that amount? In a sense, yes. Mr. Ball. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to be, be clear, and I know it's semantics, there aren't any intersection improvements. All the improvements are on Willand Drive with a radius to set up for intersection improvements. Concept one. The uh, 
difference we're talking about in numbers. There's a lot of estimates at, at the very beginning. And we had an estimate for 35, we had an estimate for 42. That was a range in value. And uh, the city planner is talking about what they came up. Our numbers in going through the budget for construction get to be very efficient because we had people on site and material on site and nobody's trucking in and everything. So that latest number came up to $25,000 for us. If, if the city has a concern, we can talk about that number. That number wasn't part of the planning. It's just what we're going to do. We have no control over who's going to do the work or bidding process if it went that way. The two major factors that we all sit on is that the monies and the time for the engineering have already been completed. That doesn't need to change as will and drive. I brought up what you did earlier, Mr. Rhodes, the civil consultants, because can't we get some, just do the widening and get to a certain point? But there are other engineering issues and liability issues with that and where it goes to. Even after receiving uh, an approval, happy to revisit that and everything we talked about. We just can't do that and left be, and, and, and be left hanging. So the engineering's in place. That never has to be done again. Most likely the DOT is going to come in and do this on their time frame. Uh, but again, I think to, to keep the verbiage down and, and issues, we're offering the 25 because that's what it cost us. If we need to, to offer you know, a little more, be, be happy to do that. Okay, so I think I, I don't want to hang us up, particularly where we're going late on something that's a small item in, in the global scheme of this work. I want to make sure that the exaction that's being applied here is satisfactory to the city that's going to need to do this work at some future point when the DOT gets 108 done and we can actually do this widening. So I guess my question then would go to Mr. Belmore and Ms. Mears. Um, is that 25 number that the applicant's putting out here sufficient in this case? And if not, what would they want to see? One more moment, Mr. Chair. Mr. Ball. I completely agree where you're coming from and just chatting and Rightfully so, you're going to have your own estimates. You're not going to have the efficiencies if the city took it over. The biggest dysfunctional hurdle and frustration for all of us is being tethered to DOT. Just want to make sure it's right here. And you're right. In the scheme of things, if the engineering office came up with that number, given this circumstance, let's, the math you were doing, let's add that number onto the 2774 as an exaction fee. We don't have to put it in escrow. It's there, and whatever the other legal, rec you know, regulations or six-year period or what have you. Where I'm trying to drive to is at the end of the day with this, your sports dome's in. It's one of the high points of the city, and we don't have people getting constantly hit on 108. As long as we end up at that point at the end of this thing, I'm happy. I just want to make sure that the city isn't stuck holding a bag in order to make that happen. Well, so. Mr. Rhodes, I agree, and. More importantly, Craig Riato agrees that that amount that to assure that that the city came up with for an estimate, we're in agreement that that 46 or 47 can be added to the 2774. Yeah. All set. Thank you. Entertain a motion. Mr. Haberman. What's that? Oh, sorry, we draw. Mr. Belmore? So, what are we doing for an offsite exaction? What amount is it? Excuse me. Proposing. Mr. Richardson, motion? No. Thank you. 
I just want to make sure that we're not expecting them to do something that DOT is going to do themselves. And so, I mean, that's what that's the reason why I'm, I want to look at what their draw, what their design was. And I mean, if we ask them to put up this money and we can give it back to them at a later time because the state has done it, all well and good. But I don't want them to be, I mean, maybe I'm confused here, but I don't want them to be paying for something that the state has in mind to do anyway. Mr. Bumble? Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I was sort of stuttering because um, we don't even know what this training lane will cost. We don't have a figure for that. Because the 20774 was for Woodland Drive from entry point to entry point on, the, on their site. And our engineer came up with 47 from entry point to entry point. No. So, um, and DOT doesn't have final plans. They're going to have more public meetings. So this, you, you don't know what's going to happen. And that's, this thing's, this sports dome's going to be open before that project gets done. Um, so I was just a little surprised with the amount of money and the applicant was willing to do it because it wasn't in the original approval. But if he's willing to do it, I have no, I'm fine. Um, do you have my last motion maybe to read back, uh, Anna? And just. So the motion is to amend the condition of approval by removing the language of 4A as presented, leaving the only language in off-site exaction in the amended amount of 68244 dollars prior to a certificate of occupancy and furthermore that the applicant immediately notified DOT of withdrawing the city's application onto Route 108. Driveway application. Driveway application onto Route 108 which includes withdrawing Concept 1 SK2 regarding the turning lane onto Route 108. And I just add the 68,244 for improvements to Willen Drive shall be collected prior to the issuance of a CO. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second by Horton. Mr. Horton. Discussion. Those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you for working this through with us tonight. And you know, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, just an administrative piece. I don't think we ever had a vote to accept this application as complete. Do we need to get that in there just so we don't end up having to revisit this six months down the road? Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Rhodes, second by Mr. Belmo. All in favor, application complete. Raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion Stand. passes. Last in, first out order thank tonight. You, okay. Good <laughs> catch, Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Any new business that may come before the board, Director Mears? Real quick, uh, Summersworth Community uh, Workshop for the Natural Resources and Land Use Chapter will be held May 2nd from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at City Hall Council Chambers. We will be sending that out to you guys if you want to attend. And I promise we will not be having any more workshops for land use or master plan chapters until the fall after this one. Thank you. <laughs> workshop business. Oh, one other thing. Oh, do you have a, yeah. some, some more new items? Yeah, sorry. Uh, there is also a, a survey that needs to be completed uh, as part of this uh, that we will send out a link to for the land use uh, master plan chapter. Any workshop business this evening? I don't know workshops. Though. Workshop? No. And communications and miscellaneous. Mr. Belmore. If you guys will indulge me, I know it's been a long meeting. Um, and I'm sorry if I was the uh, 
pull like something better instigator regarding key at the kia thing and not being complete and all that jazz i think we've talked about this before and i'm just wondering how the board feels and giving staff direction that people always seem to be anxious to come to us but don't put them on the agenda unless we've got a complete packet because i don't know what we accomplished with kia really tonight just from my perspective because we already had a conceptual yeah we already had a conceptual plus the butters Granted, in this instance, nobody showed up, but in other times people will show up. They deserve to see a full set of plans instead of having to come to two or three meetings with landscape cha changes changing and that sort of thing. And this was very, landscaping and buffering was very important in this particular concept. So I'm not sure what we gained. I don't know how other board members feel, but I'd like to try to get away from just getting in here and not being able to, you know, I, I really, Makes pride sense. ourselves is, is getting projects done in one or two meetings and starting right out of the gate with, with a complete package and sometimes approving it one meeting. Makes sense. Any other communications? Mr. Horton. Yeah, just to follow up to that, I mean, I, I understand your point, Bob, but Mr. Belmar, but uh, I think uh, in this case, uh, I, I guess we're pushing that decision back on to the planning director and if the applicant feels that they have a strong argument for making the plans complete. I guess I can see the case in which the decision gets moved to the board. So yeah. I, I, I mean, I see a point, but I also see the other side of it where, you know, we're trying to be uh, accommodating, I guess. Yeah. That's all I got. It's in a motion to adjourn. Oh, one other thing. Mr. Abeman? Yeah, just a, uh, going back to that property in the uh, buffer zone and what they're using for a plastic fence G going forward on any sound barrier. I mean, uh, we all see what they do on the highways, DOT and what they do there. And, and I'm sure those are a lot better sound resistant than what we're doing with a plastic fence if we ever have to do this again going forward. So. Yeah. Any other communications? Uh, Dr. Mears. So just another update. Uh, we will be sending out uh, site compliance to Firestone. Unfortunately, uh, they are keeping their rear doors o open and I just wanted to update the planning board on this. Uh, our code compliance officer has sent out a summons uh, regarding this issue, but it will be coming back in May. Thank you. Any other communications? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Spomo, second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion, all those in favor? Raise your right hand. Thank you very much. Opposed?